Hello friends. Welcome to the Muse fanfiction. How are you all? So in this video, we will see what if Naruto inherited the powers of Kyubi with the aid of Dragon. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time, let's begin the story. Ah oh, I can't believe I'm late yelled a nine-year-old blonde boy as he ran through the village of Konoha. The boy was wearing a cream white t-shirt and blue shorts and sandals. His name was Naruto Uzumaki, and it was his first day at the academy and he was late as could be. Shino Aburame, here. Choji Akamichi, Munch, here. Sakura Haruno, present, Hanada Hayuga, H here. Kiba Inazuka, here. Arf, Shikamaru Nara, Zs, here. Sasuke Uchiha, HN, here, Naruto Uzumaki, no answer came, okay I'll get back to him. Ino Yamanaka, present, and now, Naruto Uzumaki, slam, here, Naruto said after catching his breath. Well Naruto nice of you to make it in time, since you're already here, you can introduce yourself. Naruto walked to the front of the class, took a big breath and said, well more like yelled, my name is Naruto Uzumaki and I'm going to be Hokage. It didn't take long before almost the entire class erupted with laughter, while those that didn't laugh just mumbled, idiot, under their breaths. The teacher couldn't help but smile to himself at the boy's declaration, he's got spirit, thank you Naruto, you may take your seat. Naruto nodded and took the seat beside a blue-haired girl. After that everyone else in the class introduced themselves and the day began. The teacher whose name was Aruka Amino, had the class mainly do bookwork, which Naruto and his classmate Shikamaru mainly slept through. It wasn't until spars came up that Naruto realized just how alone he was in the school. The teacher had paired him up with Sasuke as the last spar before the end of the day. Beat him down Sasuke-kun, one of the many girls in Sasuke's seemingly growing fanbase yelled. Prepare to lose Sasuke, Naruto said confidently, though his confidence did take a bit of a hit. He had a crush on the pink-haired Sakura since he saw her at the beginning of the school day. But alas, she along with the other blonde-haired student in class, Ino, was pretty much the creators of what seemed to be a very horrible fan club. HN. Was all Sasuke replied before getting into a fighting stance. Him being an Uchiha they had their own kind with an unknown name. All it took was a few seconds after the word, Kajim. Before Naruto was on the ground with Sasuke's fist buried in his jaw. Yay! I knew you could beat that loser Sasuke-kun, Sakura called out. You beat him good, Ino added. After dismissing the class Aruka looked around to see Naruto still in his same position on the ground. As he walked over he heard Naruto mutter the words, no better than walking outside during the day. Aruka nearly stopped when he heard that, so you have had it rough. Rougher than anyone here I bet. Then he saw Naruto notice his arrival and stand up with a big grin on his face. Sorry about that Aruka sensei. Guess I lost track of time. All Aruka did was smile and say it was alright. Just don't stay on the ground so long you had me worried. Naruto nodded his reply and headed away. Naruto had decided to head to the training field. There was a private part that he found secluded enough for him the day before. The area had a small waterfall running through into a small river. He stood punching a tree mulling over the events of his first day at the ninja academy. Stupid Teme Wack acting all high and mighty. Wack I'll show him. Then he heard a rustling in the bushes beside him. He jumped back and pulled out an old kanai knife from his back pocket. He then said, if you're coming to try to beat me up, just so you know, I'm armed. He then saw a familiar pair of eyes walk out of the bushes. Oh it's you Hanada chan He heard the lavender-eyed girl make a slight, eep, when she heard the formal at the end of her name. Come on you can do this just ask him. She told herself, she had had a crush on the blonde boy ever since he saved him from some bullies. The only problem was that she would always get nervous around him. Um, w what are y u d doing? She stuttered out. Just training so I can beat that Sasuke Teme and show him how strong I really am. Naruto replied. He then gave a foxy grin that made Hinata blush, maybe even more than she already was. Don't faint. Do not faint. Just ask him. Um I is it a alright th that I train w with yyu? 
Naruto all of a sudden had a dumbfounded look on his face that made the Hyuga even more nervous. No one had even wanted to even hang out with him. Then next thing he knew he was hugging Hinata yelling thank you at the top of his lungs. That would be awesome. With both of us training together, we'll become the best in the academy. He then looked up to see that Hinata had passed out from being so close to him. Gah, Hinata-chan. After a while Hinata came to and looked around to find Naruto sitting by the stream. Naruto looked back to see Hinata coming towards him. Oh hey you're awake. He said with a smile. So are you ready to get started? Hinata nodded shyly. W what do you w want t to d do? Well how about we spar to see where each of us are? Hinata nodded to the suggestion backed up little from the river and got into her clan's stance. Naruto backed away from the river as well and got into the stance that he was taught. As they threw punches and kicks they could both tell they weren't very experienced. After about what seemed like an eternity for Hinata, Naruto was finally tired out. As they lay in the grass looking at the sky catching their breaths, Naruto spoke up first, Hey Hinata-chan, what was that style of fighting you were using? Being somehow too tired to stutter she answered, It's called the Jayukan, or the Gentle Fist. As Hyugazus it in conjunction with our Byakugan. Naruto sat up and tilted his head in confusion, Baya what? Hinata giggled and said, Byakugan, it's the Dujutsu of the Hyuga clan. It's also our Keke Jenke, or bloodline trade as it's also called. Can you teach me it? Naruto asked with a bit of excitement. S sorry Naruto-kun, but like I said it's only a bloodline trade of the Hyuga. Hinata replied. Naruto was a bit disappointed by that but he understood a bit, okay I think I get it, Naruto said. You must be the best at it. Suddenly Hinata became solemn, I wish that were so. Naruto noticed the drop in her confidence, what's wrong? I'm the worst in my clan's fighting style. Everyone is better than me. I can't even beat my little sister. I'm never going to be able to succeed my father as the head of the clan. Wait, your dad is the head of the clan? Hinata nodded, but that's not all. If I even do become clan head, the elders would put the caged bird seal on my sister. What does it do? It not only labels my sister as a S side branch member but, at any main branch member's word, they can cause the S seal to make the person feel intense pain. And should the side branch member get kidnapped, it would de destroy the Byakugan that T they have. Naruto had a look of disbelief on his face, he just couldn't believe that a clan could just put a seal like that on a person and whenever they like put the poor person in a world of agony. After a few moments Hinata was starting to get uncomfortable with the silence. Hey Hinata-chan, what is your dream? Hinata was kind of surprised by the question. She had never been asked that before, to be with you one day. She thought hoping to hide her blushing face. I guess become clan head of the V village, she said trying to gain her almost lost confidence. You don't want to be the best? Naruto asked. Wli. Hinata started, but stopped when Naruto held out his pinky finger. How about we make a promise to each other, what do we have to do? Hinata asked as she entwined her pinky with Naruto's causing her to blush a little more. Easy just follow my example. I Naruto, vow to become the best shinobi in Konoha and become the next Hokage. Hinata was awed by Naruto's vigor, and after thinking a bit said, I Hinata, vow to become the best kunoichi in the village, and become clan head I will change the way of my clan. Then Naruto unexpectedly said something that made her fall even more in love with Naruto, and once I become Hokage, I'll help you. Hinata's look of shock wore off when she realized it was starting to get late. Oh, I better get home before my father gets worried. You want to meet here next week? Naruto asked. Yeah I would love to. Hinata replied. They then nodded to each other and ran in different directions of their homes. One happy they made a friend, and another happy to be making friends with their long time crush. Oi, Ni-chan get up. A voice called. Hinata shot up into the sitting position saying, I'm up, in a very dreary voice. She looked over to her room door to see her little sister Hanabi standing there giving her the classic scowl that most of the Hyuga gave her. You're gonna be late for your genin exam if you don't hurry. Suddenly Hinata suddenly got a shocked look on her face, shot out of bed, and ran out of the door to get ready, but not before giving her sister a big hug. Thank you. Thank you Hanabi-chan, yeah yeah, now let me go. Once Hinata was ready she headed to tell her father she was leaving. She knocked on the door and waited until she heard, Enter, 
After she entered she told her father that she was going but before she was about to leave, her father said, before you leave there is something that I want to talk to you about. Later on, Hanada was walking through the village on the way to the academy thinking about the talk that she had just had with her father. As she let her eyes wander from side to side she noticed the familiar looks that she always had gotten from the people she walked by. The day was normal as it always was, but it felt like something and it had changed. Get back here, but, some things never change. After hearing the shout Hanada knew exactly who was coming around the next corner after doing one of his daily pranks. She was right on the money, because Naruto had come flying around the corner smiling from ear to ear. In that split second, Naruto took something out of his back pocket, put the bucket he had further up his arm and grabbed Hanada's hand in one move. As soon as he rounded the next corner and covered both of them with the camouflage sheet. When the two chunin that were chasing him had passed by, he uncovered them and looked to Hanada. Morning Hanada Chan. Gee, good morning, Naruto kun. You might want to get out of here, Hanada Chan. I don't want you to get into. His sentence was cut off when he heard a thump above them. Trouble. Naruto finished. Standing on the gate was their teacher, Uruka. Naruto, Uruka began. Wait, wait, wait. It was just me that pulled the prank, not her, Naruto exclaimed, not wanting his friend to get into the deep trouble that he knew he was in. Naruto was reassured when Uruka smiled and said, Don't worry, I was here long enough. Naruto sighed in relief, but snapped back to attention when he saw the look on Uruka's face change dramatically. Even Hinata gulped at the look on their teacher's face. But that doesn't mean you're out of trouble. Naruto turned to Hinata, smiled, and said, Hinata chan, I'll see you at the academy. And with a sudden burst of speed, he was off and running, with Uruka hot on his heels. As Hanada neared the school she sighed in relief. She was just a couple of seconds away from passing out then and there if Naruto hadn't been running from Uruka at the time. After she found her seat she waited for Uruka to return. It wasn't long after almost everyone had arrived Uruka arrived with a tied up Naruto. Most of the class that had seen Uruka appear were now laughing at Naruto. What did he do this time? A student named Damien said. After the rest of the students came in Uruka started the genin exam. The first part was Henge Jutsu. Hanada was able to transform perfectly, but after a while Naruto came up and the class came to a halt. Naruto had used his Henge to turn into a naked woman. Now Hanada was in love with Naruto and all, but it was beyond her why the blonde had made up that perverted Jutsu. After the initial scolding from Uruka Naruto did the perfect Henge. I really do not know what you see in that idiot, Hanada, said a voice from beside Hanada. She looked to see Shikamaru resting his head on his hands looking at her. Um, well, I. She started. She was lucky the only person she would stutter around was Naruto and even that was starting to become a rare occurrence. The lazy ninja beside her only sighed and said, Look Hanada, it's really none of my business why you're in love with him. I just find him troublesome. And with that he went back to sleep. Hanada smiled at the way the boy acted, especially when it was something he didn't want to do. After lunch the second part of the exam took place. All that needed to be done was to make a successful clone. Hanada having a good handle on her chakra control was able to narrowly pull one off. The reason she kept to herself. Afterwards she was awarded her Haitate, I think that's how it's spelled. Outside she saw Naruto sitting on the swing on the tree by the academy. Naruto saw her coming, hey Hanada-chan, congrats on getting your Haitate. He flashed a foxy smile. One she knew very well, he showed it only when he was sad, she only asked one thing, what happened? The only time she didn't feel like fainting in front of him was when she was concerned for him, you don't worry about fainting when you're worried about someone, I didn't pass. Was all he said to her, that's all she needed to hear. For the rest of the time she stood beside him and watched as the other new genin met their families and left to celebrate. Hey isn't that that one kid? Shish, we're not supposed to talk about that. What's that brat doing with the Hyuga girl? Well I heard they're both the same, monsters. The last word of the whispers struck a chord in Naruto, but out of the corner of his eye he saw Hinata tense up. He looked at her and said, Don't worry Hinata-chan they're not talking about you. You're not a monster. You are the kindest person I know. Hinata blushed a little bit as he flashed his genuine foxy grin, one that said, I mean it. Then another teacher, named Mizuki came up and asked if he could talk to Naruto in private. Okay Mizuki-sensei, see ya later Hinata-chan. As he ran off, Ko, 
Hinata's personal guard came up. Are you ready to go Lady Hinata? Hinata nodded and turned to leave, but as she left a single tear ran down her cheek. Oh Naruto-kun, if you only knew. Flashback Jutsu. What is it to San? Hiyashi looked at his daughter, took a deep breath, and said, What I am about to tell you is an S-class secret. But I have reserved the right to tell you this when I believe you can handle it. Hinata nodded and braced herself, but nothing prepared her for what came next. Are you familiar with the event that had taken place on October 10th? Hinata nodded, Yes, we were taught that the nine-tailed fox demon and another beast attacked, and they were destroyed by the Yandaimi Hokage. The story wasn't really that old. People still talked about what had happened. Hiyashi nodded, Yes, the nine-tailed fox attacked along with another beast. But that beast was no mere demon. It was the Emerald Dragon. He paused as a look of shock mixed with confusion and intrigue crossed his daughter's face. The Emerald Dragon is known in legend as having power on par with that of the Nine Tails itself. But the part about the Yandaimi killing the two beasts is wrong. Hanada's confusion doubled. What do you mean? She saw her father close his eyes and look at her. She could see the concern in them but didn't want to interrupt. Before I continue, Hanada, whenever you walk around the village, do you ever get looks from the villagers and even some of the shinobi? Hanada knew what was meant by, looks, she had been getting them for as long as she could remember from the elders. After nodding she saw her father's features change and almost seemed to age as his gaze turned down. In truth, a mortal cannot kill a demon. Let alone a dragon. So he sealed the fox inside a newborn child. Then Hiyashi's gaze fell onto Hanada. Hanada somehow knew what was coming, but that didn't prepare her for this. And the dragon, was sealed inside of you. To say Hanada was shocked would be the understatement of the twelve years of her life she had known. It finally made sense. The reason why she always had to stay on her chakra control, the looks she had always gotten. It all just made sense now. I don't blame you if you hate me Hanada, but if it's worth anything I am truly sorry. The Yandaimi was going to seal both away within him and the boy but I knew he wouldn't make it. But with some convincing he allowed you to be the dragon's jailer. Hanada still had the same look on her face. But know this. You are not a monster. You are Hanada Hayuga, my daughter who I love very much. After a few moments, Hanada straightened up, her eyes for the first time holding a bit of determination in them. I don't blame you too San. If you hadn't the dragon might have gone on to destroy Konoha. She then smiled and said, Thank you for telling me too San. I will keep it a secret. Hiyashi nearly broke down, nearly. He still was a Hayuga after all. But he smiled and after he left he thought to himself, I'm surprised, she didn't ask me who the other child was. But I can tell, even though she put on a brave face it will take a while for what I have told her to settle in. But I have faith in her. Just like you have faith in your son huh, Minato? Flashback release. As Hanada looked in the mirror at herself that night, she took a wet rag and wiped the outer sides of her eyes. She then moved aside her bangs that covered the sides of her face. And here I thought it was just some weird skin rash, she thought to herself. But as she felt along the side of her eye she knew that wasn't it. She had scales along the sides of her eyes. Then she activated her Byakugan. And just as she had thought, her pupils were slitted. They must have always been that way, because she had never really noticed. After getting to her room, she couldn't help but cry herself to sleep. She had held her feelings in all day. And before she fell into slumber she couldn't help but feel that she was alone. But little did she know, a certain blonde heard these words that same night. Hanada was watching her two new teammates spar with each other. She was teamed up with Kiba in Azuka and Shino Aburame, and their sensei was Kuranai Yuhi. The Hayuga and her sensei watched on as the two sparred going back and forth. It had been a week or two since they had all been put into teams. When she saw Naruto come in the morning of their team setups she was overjoyed. But when she found out that she wasn't going to be on the same team as him. Her heart sank a bit. Flashback Jutsu. It was lunchtime and as usual she sat by herself thinking as she ate, well, it might not be all bad, not being on the same team might help me become a little more confident in my own skills since I won't be able to train with him much. Then all of a sudden she heard the all too familiar, Hey Hanada chan. From behind her as her crush came and sat beside her. Hey Naruto kun, she replied, mildly surprised that she didn't, eep, when he called her. So have you got to meet with your teammates yet? Hanada shook her head, no not yet, 
it's too bad we're not on the same team. But we'll at least get to train with other people. Plus I get to show Sakura-chan how much better I am than that Teme Sasuke. Naruto chuckled a bit and held his arm like he was flexing a muscle inside the sleeve of his orange jumpsuit. The only thing Hinata knew to do was chuckle along with him, even though her spirits took a very nasty dive. Hey maybe we could meet up and spar whenever we get a chance to see each other outside missions and all, the blonde added. Hinata nearly froze at the words, see each other, but managed to say, why yes that would be great. After lunch as she was walking back to class thinking, I wish you would at least look at me like you look at her. Flashback release. Okay that's enough, the Genjutsu mistress said. Now that we're done with warm ups let's go get our mission for the day. As they walked to the Hokage Tower, Kiba said, Man Shino why don't you ever fight back in our spars? His ninja hound Akamaru barked in agreement. Shino just kept walking straight and said, It was a light spar, so I didn't see a real need to fight seriously with you. You leave enough openings that I could defeat you in a few simple moves. What was that? Kiba yelled, That enough you too? Kuranai interjected. I swear to Kami this one is going to be the death of me she thought to herself indicating Kiba. The Inazuka, while a capable fighter, was loud, brash, and doesn't really think before his actions. This got him into a lot of trouble. On top of that Kurenai could tell that he had a crush on Hinata. It was pretty easy to see being that he always hit on the poor girl trying to ask her out, only for her to politely decline. Every, single, time. Shino, as far as Kurenai could tell, was the more anti-social one of the group. He never really talked unless it was absolutely necessary. Or if he felt like he had been asked a stupid question. In which Kiba's case was always to him. But the biggest mystery to the red eyed sensei was Hanada. She always looked like she was thinking about something. She didn't have to worry about the young Hayuga's confidence too much. But when it came to Kiba always asking her out, it was beginning to wear on the girl. She knew that the girl had a crush on the Uzumaki and that they had trained together as much as they could since their first year in the academy. And by what she could tell, both Shino and Kiba knew who she had a crush on, much to the chagrin of Kiba. When they got into the Hokage's office the old man said, Akura and I, came for your team's mission. The group bowed, yes Lord Hokage. Well I don't have any D-rank missions for your team, I do have a mission that requires another team for assistance. It involves Team 7. Hanada shot to attention. That's Naruto kun's team. Please let him be all right. She tried to hide what she was feeling, but with a Janin, Chunin, and the Hokage in the room, they were the only ones who happened to notice the Genin's reaction. What happened? Kuranai asked. It seems that the simple escort mission that they were on has taken a slight turn and they will need assistance. You are to catch up to them and assist them in their mission in the Land of Waves. Yes, Lord Hokage, the group said. After the group exited the room, the Hokage chuckled a bit. Be careful out there Naruto. I have a feeling this mission will change your life. Oh how right he was. As team 8 assembled at the gate, Kiba said, sweet our first mission outside the village. Finally a chance to stretch our legs. Right Hanada? He practically yelled, asked. Yeah, Hanada replied. Shino just nodded. All right then let's head out, Kuranai announced. And with that the group headed out at top speed to meet up with Team 7. It took about most of the day to catch up and the scene they had happened upon wasn't what they had expected. They found Kakashi Hitaki, the Jonin of Team 7 lying on the ground with four people surrounding him. Looks like we got here just in time, Kuranai said. Kuranai sensei, what are you guys doing here? Naruto's teammate Sakura asked. What do you think we're here for? We're your back up, Kiba said cockily you guys look like hell. The girl shot him a look but turned back to the semi-conscious Kakashi. In any case, Kuranai began, we'll need to take him somewhere to recuperate and regain his chakra. An old man that was with team 7 came up, I may be of help. My name is Tazuna. My home is not far from here. Then lead the way Tazuna. Kuranai replied, and with that the group, with Naruto and Sasuke carrying an unconscious Kakashi, headed to Tazuna's house. Later on at Tazuna's house after getting to the bridge builder's house, they met Tsunami, Tazuna's daughter. It took the rest of the day, but the next day Kakashi soon came to and explained what had happened. It turned out that a missing nin named Zabuza had attacked them, aiming to kill the bridge builder. But before Kakashi could strike a fatal blow, 
the swordsman of the mist was killed by two senban needles to the neck. So if I were to guess what's to come, would I be guessing right? Kurinai asked. What do you mean Kurinai sensei? Naruto asked. It would seem that Zabuza is still alive. That sent shockwaves through most of the house, especially Team 7. Naruto punched his hand, dang it, I thought we'd be rid of him by now, how can he still be alive? Remember the Hunter Nin? Kakashi pointed out. Hunter Nin are supposed to burn the body of the missing Nin they have been sent to hunt while keeping the head to present as proof of their capture. So what are we gonna do? Sakura asked. Both Jonin shared a look, and then looked back to the Genin, train. Naruto couldn't help but yell his excitement, ah yeah, finally training. Hanada smiled at Naruto's antics, she had really missed him a lot, though she tried to hide at her best, everybody in the room noticed, save for Naruto. As they walked outside and into the forest, Kurinai asked Kakashi, so, how is your team? Kakashi sighed and said, well, Sasuke is the strongest of the group but he's a loner. Sakura is more interested in Sasuke than training. And Naruto is, well Naruto. Kurinai chuckled a bit, well what is your team like? Kiba is hot-headed, Shino is silent and less most necessary, and Hanada seems a bit more or less shy. Kakashi nodded, as they finally came to the spot they were heading to. It was far enough from the house that it won't get caught up in any training that they assign, but close enough that they would be able to get to the house should something happen. Now let's get started. Today we will be working on your chakra control. Naruto's face fell, ah why aren't we learning any jutsus? Shut it Dobi and listen. Sasuke said with his hands still in his pockets. What did you say Teme? Naruto bellowed. Fwack, Sakura punched Naruto on the head and yelled, Baka, leave Sasuke-kun alone. While the rest of the genin were paying to the spectacle that unfolded, Kurinai noticed a certain Hyuga tense up. Almost as if she was ready to fight. Kakashi also had noticed but decided to leave the matter to the Jinjutsu mistress. Well, Naruto, Kakashi started, you're going to climb this tree. How are we going to do that? Kiba asked. Like this, Kakashi then made a seal with his hand and walked up the tree. The genin had looks of wonder on their faces, while Shino raised his eyebrows. Then Kakashi threw a kanai down to each of them. And after Kurinai explained on how to mold their chakra, the genin got started. Sasuke and Kiba got a few steps before falling back down. Naruto only got two steps in before falling on his back. Shino made it a third of the way to the top. While Sakura made it to the first branch and stopped. It was then Hinata noticed that she was still on the ground watching the others. I guess it's your turn, huh, Hinata? Naruto joked. He then felt a jab to his arm. Ow, what was that for? Leave her alone Naruto, she doesn't need you bothering her, Kiba yelled. Okay okay sheesh, I was just joking, Naruto yelled back, then he walked up to Hinata, sorry about that Hinata I didn't mean it. Hinata just smiled and said, it's okay Naruto-kun, I know you were joking. She then proceeded to walk up the tree, all the way up the tree. Well well, it seems you have your own prodigy Kurinai, Kakashi said. What do you expect Kakashi sensei? Naruto said with a big smile. Hinata always has to keep up on her chakra control most of the time. Everyone except for the Hyuga in question looked at him like he was crazy. And how would you know that Dobi? Sasuke said while trying to keep himself calm from watching Hinata get farther than him. Well Teme, me and Hinata used to hang out. In fact we used to spar with each other. Who would want to hang out with you Baka? Sakura said let alone spar with you, you probably always got beat by her. At that Naruto got quiet, which incited a taunting laugh from Kiba, ha ha, I knew it. Once Adobe always Adobe. He would never be able to beat Hinata. Naruto just kept his head down, hiding his eyes. Hinata wanted to say something, she had to say something, but Kurinai beat her to it. That's enough all of you. That does give me an idea though, how about we do some spars? Kakashi nodded, that sounds like a good idea. Okay, Kiba, Sasuke, you two first. The area was big enough for the two to find a spot to stand before getting into stances. The fight didn't last long. Kiba's fast movements weren't fast enough as Sasuke was beaten within a few minutes. To everyone's surprise, Naruto didn't say anything at all. They have never seen him so quiet. 
Sakura and Shino were next, but she basically gave up at the first sign Shino was going to use his insects. And then finally came Naruto and Hin the two Jonin were really looking forward to seeing if what the Hokage had told him was true. Let's see if what the Hokage said is true. Hanada walked out into the space but Naruto was still as a statue. What's the matter Dobi afraid of getting beat by a girl? Kiba taunted. Leave him alone Kiba it's not like he actually stands a chance, Sasuke said dismissively. Then everyone got quiet when they heard Hanada, Naruto-kun. The blonde shifted a little but still didn't respond. Naruto-kun look at me. Naruto raised his head to look at her. The look in his eyes pained her, but she had to tell him something to get him back to the way he was. Remember, remember the vow we made to each other the first day of the academy? She ignored the shocked expressions and focused on the cerulean eyes that nodded their remembrance. Well, I still remember as well, and if you don't spar with me, it'll be like breaking that vow. And, her head was down, but as she raised it up her resolution shone through. I comma I won't forgive you. The shock on Naruto's face changed to admiration as he smiled and walked up. After he was about six feet away from her he said, Thank you Hinata-chan. I really needed that. And I do remember. I never go back on my word. Believe it. Just wanted to do that one time at least. Um, you're welcome Naruto-kun. Hinata replied with a mild blush, but she shook it off. It has been a while since we last sparred. Are there any rules Kakashi-sensei? Naruto asked. Just no chakra. Their sensei replied. Both nodded, and after a brief pause, Kuranai called, begin. Both Naruto and Hinata ran at each other. Their speed didn't surprise everyone, but what came next did. Hinata threw a juken strike at Naruto, who in turn ducked and threw a left uppercut. But Hinata parried it away, spun and threw another strike towards his head. At the same time Naruto spun the opposite way and swung his arm a testament to his brawler fighting style. As soon as his arm hit Hinata's, Naruto held it there. Both stood for a moment still as statues, their eyes deadlocked onto each other. Then they all of a sudden backed off and kicked each other in the chest, knocking the other to the ground. Naruto shot up and threw a punch down. Hinata rolled and scored a roundhouse kick once she got up. But Naruto instantly shook it off and charged back in, throwing punch after punch. But the blonde also was trying to dodge the heiress blows that she was throwing. While all this was going on, the other genin stared in awe. They knew Hinata was the top of the class in taijutsu, but to see the proclaimed dead last going toe to toe with her. Is this happening? Sakura said. She, along with the rest of the genin, stared wide eyed. Well, you could say Shino's eyebrows were raised. Naruto is going matching Hinata move for move, the beetle user said. That's impossible. Naruto must be cheating or something, Kiba bellowed. Sasuke almost felt cheated, the dobi of the class was keeping up with the Hyuga girl. Not only that, but landing hits. Had he been holding back? He gritted his teeth in frustration. He told you didn't he? Kakashi chimed in. Remember, he did tell you that he and Hinata used to train together since the first day of the academy. But he's the dobi of the class, he shouldn't even be able to land a hit on her. Kiba exclaimed. That actually makes sense though, Shino said getting everyone's attention. What do you mean? Anaruto said, he and Hinata have been training with each other since the first day of the academy. Therefore, they have had time to memorize each other's moves and adapt accordingly. I would also go to say that if he wanted, Naruto could use the katas of the Juken itself. Though not to the extent that a Hyuga is capable of. And Hinata could also deliver a punch with an impressive amount of force if need be. Then, as if on cue, Naruto's and Hinata's fists bypassed each other and landed in their opponents' faces. The force of the blow knocked the two away as they sprawled out on the ground. As they stood up Hinata's knees shook a little. Her stamina had increased from all the sparring with Naruto over the years, but she was still winded. But the consolation was in front of her as Naruto got up, breathing just as hard as she was. Naruto had to admit, it had been a while since he had sparred with Hinata. Normally he wouldn't be that tired. Man, he was slacking. You're getting rusty Naruto-kun. He heard the brunette say with a smirk on her face. He recognized that one. The only time she ever really smiled was when they were sparring after he had gotten her to open up. That was probably because most of the time she was winning, which was kind of fine with him, but he didn't know why. 
I could say the same to you Hinata Chan, he replied. That's enough, Kuranai said, we'll consider this a draw. Ah we were just getting started, Naruto said with a smirk. There will be enough time for that later, the Genjutsu mistress replied. She also saw a hint of disappointment in the young Hayuga's eyes. Then it finally clicked. Hinata is trying to get his attention through combat. Not very subtle, but if it pays off it pays off. Now back to tree climbing. Later on that night, the day ended with Naruto, Sasuke, and Kiba finally getting all the way up the tree. After they got in they settled down and ate. Once again I'm sorry for have lied to you about this. Tazuna said during their dinner. It's okay old man. Naruto replied, not showing the least bit of respect. Once the bridge is done it'll help everyone, right? Tazuna was about to answer when all of a sudden a new voice came out of the door to the table of the kitchen. It's not going to matter. You're all going to die anyway. Oh Inari, come and say hello to the ninjas that escorted your grandpa. Tazuna's daughter Tsunami had said. First thing the young boy did was hug his grandfather, then he turned to the ninjas. You guys don't stand a chance. Gato will kill you if you don't get out of here. Naruto scoffed, like I'm afraid of an old midget. Gato is no joke kid, Tazuna said. He commands a small army of thugs and sends them to do his bidding. Taking from money, to even people, to sell them into slavery. Sakura and Hinata shuddered at that thought. And anyone who gets in his way is killed. Inari finished. So just forget about this stupid mission of yours cause if you keep going on with it you'll die. Inari, Tsunami started. It's true mom. The same thing that happened to dad is going to happen to them. So I guess you didn't inherit his bravery. Naruto chimed in. You don't know what it's like. Inari yelled. You don't know what it's like to lose someone close to you. You act so smug just because you're a ninja. Everyone that was in the room looked over to see Naruto slowly get up and walk over to the boy, who didn't take his eyes off the older blonde and stared at him defiantly. Then all of a sudden Naruto smacked his hand on top of the boy's head, causing Sakura to yell, Naruto. But she felt Sasuke grab her arm and looked down to see him shake his head for her not to interfere. Sasuke knew the reason why Naruto had did what he did. He understood what the boy was talking about but he did not have to blatantly insult them to get his point across. Now listen to me, you little snot. Have you ever been blamed for something that you didn't? Have you ever been beaten up because the kids you tried to play with lied on you? Have you ever been treated so badly and hated for a reason that wasn't your own? Have you ever laid in your bed wondering where your parents were? Wondering if they abandoned you or not? The boy stayed silent. Naruto let up a little so the Inari's eyes met his. I didn't think so. Now I may not know what it is like to lose someone, but what I've been through is just as bad. I may not have anyone but you don't see me crying about it. So unless you actually want to help, I suggest you stay out of our way. He then took his hand off of the boy's head. We don't need any dead weight holding us back. The sheer tone of Naruto's words permeated throughout the room like the hidden mist jutsu. As Inari tensed up Naruto turned to walk out, he stopped to push his seat in and bowed to Tsunami. Sorry for my outburst. Thank you for the dinner Tsunami-san. And with that he walked to the door he stopped as he got there and turned his head, saying, you're lucky you know that. At least you still have a family. And then, he walked out into the woods. The house was silent for a few moments before Hinata broke the silence, I'll go after him. She looked to Kuranai who nodded and after thanking Tsunami for the dinner she walked out to look for her crush. What, what did Naruto mean by what he said? Sakura asked. Naruto is an orphan. He's pretty much had only himself for most of his life. He must have had it rough. Tazuna replied. Many would say that. Back in the village he used to pull pranks. Most likely that was just to get attention. Kakashi then turned to Inari who was still standing there. I know he seems a bit brash but what he is saying is correct. We will protect your grandfather from getting hurt. And that is a promise. Inari raised his head, his eyes filled with tears, nodded and walked back into his room. The rest of the time was spent in silence as Kakashi volunteered to wait for Naruto and Hinata. In the forest. As she walked through the forest, Hinata heard a low thumping that started to get louder. She found Naruto punching a tree. It had become a habit of his to get his frustration out. He heard Hinata walk up but kept punching it. His hands were bloodied from hitting the tree. But then all of a sudden he felt a weight on his back. 
he looked down to see the cream-colored arms of a coat wrapped around his waist. I'm sorry you feel like this, he heard the Hyuga say. It's not your fault. I'm the one that ruined the dinner, he said chuckling slightly to himself. He turned to Hinata as she let go, she looked down at his hands, and to say the least they were messed up. I can fix those, she said as she reached into her coat and pulled out a brown container and some bandages. After wrapping Naruto's hands, he thanked her. As they walked back, a realization suddenly hit Hinata, I had been hugging Naruto-kun. And for the first time in a long time, Hinata was blushing. Hey Hinata are you alright? Uh, yeah I'm fine he. Huh? thank goodness it's dark out. Later on, Hinata and Naruto talked as they walked back in, are you sure going to be alright Naruto-kun? Yeah, I'll be alright, the blonde said before smiling. That's good to know said Kakashi out of nowhere, nearly scaring the youths. As he walked off he said, you're gonna need that energy so rest up, we have at least six days left. Before what Kakashi sensei, Kakashi turned back to them with a serious look in his eye. Before Zabuza returns. The rest of the week had gone by in an almost flash, both teams were taking turns watching over Tazuna as he was building the bridge. The last day before the aforementioned return of Zabuza and his masked partner had ended with Shino, Naruto, and Hinata taking the day off with Kuranai watching over them. Kuranai was having the genin hang on the branch upside down for five minutes with their chakra to further help their chakra control. Reason being it helped them keep their concentration from falling on their heads. Hinata naturally had been able to do it on the first try, followed by Shino. But Naruto on the other hand, ga, bam not so much. Naruto-kun are you all right? Hinata asked frantically, running over to see if the blonde was okay. Yeah I'm all right. I'm used to it. Naruto got up and walked back up to the branch that he was on. Hinata was still worried about Naruto getting hurt until her teammate came up and offered some words of encouragement. You shouldn't worry about him. He will be all right. Shino said trying to raise his partner's spirits as best he could. I may not know him as well as you but I can tell you care greatly for him. So just believe in him and he will be fine. With that comment in mind Hinata smiled and nodded. Naruto-kun we're going back, be careful. Naruto just flashed his big grin and said, don't worry about me Hinata-chan I'll be okay. Then, not again, bam. Hinata just chuckled to herself, knowing that her crush wouldn't give up until he was able to stay at least the five minutes. Later on Naruto came in and went straight to bed passing out in the process. The next day, Naruto was running through the forest as fast as his legs could take him. He had the sinking feeling it wasn't going to be a good day. He had acquired a sixth sense about it as a kid and it was sending signals like wildfire, spider sense, tingling. Lol sorry if that's a bad joke. He woke up late to find that the others were gone, beat down two of Gato's thugs, and it turned out that the tyrant stopped trusting Zabuza, and probably planned on killing the missing Nin, his accomplice, Tazuna, and them all in one go. And that all led down to this point, but first things first, he had to save his friends. Please let me not be too late, back at the bridge, the group had split up. Kakashi and Kuranai were taking on Zabuza, while Hinata and Sasuke fought off his accomplice, Haku, leaving the others the guard Tazuna. Things had gone from bad to worse when Haku activated her bloodline trait, and created a dome of ice mirrors around the two Dujutsu users. Haku's speed was intense enough that the genin could barely keep up with the ice style user if at all. Which ended with them getting Senbon embedded in them and when they were not looking the ice style user was about to finish them off, and wouldn't you know it, Naruto made it just in time scoring a hit on the fake hunter Nin. Sorry I'm late. Naruto Uzumaki is here. The Janin allowed themselves a smile while, all but Hinata frowned. Well maybe he can attack from the outside and get us out of here, Sasuke thought, but, it was not to be. Hey Sasuke, Hinata-chan I'm here to rescue you guys, Naruto was inside the mirrors. For Sasuke that had taken the cake, you you idiot, now you're trapped in here with us. Hey that's not much of a thank you, you human pincushion, no offense Hinata, it was true. Both Sasuke and Hinata had Senbon stuck in different parts of their bodies. But Hinata just nodded her head in acknowledgement, adrenaline still going through her veins. Besides, I'm not totally clueless, the blonde said. Suddenly a massive explosion rocked the bridge. With the Janin. 
What was that? The Jonin were wondering. Then they dodged another swipe from Zabaza's sword. I have to admit, Zabuza said, you were right he is unpredictable. I wouldn't have thought that Loudmouth would have thought to attack from the outside. You trained him well. Don't thank us, Kurinai said. Naruto has always been the resourceful one of the group. Kakashi added. Hey, too bad it's a flawed plan. The swordsman added to his previous statement with a maniacal grin. Then the battle between the tree Jonin resumed. With Sakura, Kiba, Shino, and Tazuna. What the heck was that? Kiba bellowed. He and Akamaru were on edge with the sounds of battle going on around them. The same was with Sakura. Even though she held her kanai at the ready, she was trembling all over. Shino himself was ridged but alert. He had sent some of his beetles out in a loose net and connected his chakra to them. If something passed through said net, he would know. Let's just hope that everyone is safe and still alive, the Aburame said. Back with Naruto, Hanada, and Sasuke. Hey boss, it didn't break. Naruto had summoned two clones to try to break a few of the ice mirrors. But the ice remained unscathed as if it was just there. What try again? He yelled after helping up his friends. He had silently whispered to the two that when the clones threw another set of kanai with paper bombs attached they would make a break for it, using the explosion for cover. Not seeing a lot of options, they agreed. Well Hinata agreed instantly, while Sasuke reluctantly agreed. As soon as they heard an explosion the three ran in the direction of said sound. But it wasn't to be. They were knocked back and the clones were dispersed. Dang. Why didn't it work? Naruto exclaimed. It was a good plan, Haku said with a smirk hidden by her mask. But you were just too slow. That, and you and your comrades are injured. What do you mean ah? Naruto's retort was cut short when some senbon shot into his legs, sending him to one knee. The Sasuke and Hinata went to help, but the Uchiha suddenly had Senbon in his shoulder, and a Hyuga had Senbon her arm. Why don't you just give up? You can clearly see that your efforts are useless. The masked shinobi spoke solemnly. Not gonna happen. Naruto shot back. I have a dream to become the Hokage and nothing's gonna stop me. But first I'm going to get out of here and defeat both of you guys. Before either of his comrades could stop him. He made his signature seal and shadow clones started attacking the mirrors. They were all dispersed and Naruto ended up with a senbon in one of his hands and in his arm. Hey Naruto, can you do that again? Sasuke surprisingly asked. All Naruto did was nod and summon the shadow clones once more. They were all wiped out but Sasuke was able to score a hit with a fire jutsu. Albeit was a small burn on the ice ninja's clothing. I can see. The Uchiha thought as he knew he had finally gotten his Sharingan. Haku noticed this and said, the Sharingan. I guess I can't afford to pull my punches any longer. He then made a hand sign and said, ice style, savage blizzard jutsu. Suddenly the wind inside the dome stirred up, the temperature started to drop even more than it already was. Now what? Naruto said. Then the wind started circulating faster and faster in the dome making it even colder until a sheen of pure white covered the inside, preventing anything from being seen from the inside or out. With the Jonin. So Haku decided to use that jutsu. She must have been pushed into a corner or she cannot wait any longer, Zabuza thought to himself. Be careful Hanada, Kuranai thought, clearly feeling the spike of chakra. Back in the Dome of Doom, Sari just had to. The three genin were looking around in the white space until Hanada felt something cut her arm. She looked down to see the sleeve of her jacket with a cut in it. She then heard the boys grunt in pain. Naruto had a cut on his cheek while Sasuke had a cut on his leg. Then out of nowhere the blizzard picked up to a point where it suddenly yanked into midair. The next thing they felt was pain. Ah! 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 With the other genin. Their cries ripped through the air as they were tossed around the savage storm of cuts. Everyone on the bridge could hear the carnage going on. Kiba wanted to help mainly Hinata, but Shino stopped him. Sakura was trying to block out the cries with little effort as tears started to well up in her eyes, thinking about how hurt her Sasuke-kun was getting. Then suddenly the cries stopped, and there was silence. The only sounds that were going on were the Janin fighting. The other Janin were suddenly on edge, ready for anything that was coming from either side. Suddenly, it happened Zabuza appeared in front of Sakura, and then the sound of metal-breaking flesh, followed by Sakura's scream. 
Inside the crystal ice mirrors, Sakura, she's in trouble. Naruto tried to get up, but he, along with his teammates, were covered in all manner of ice weapons. The group was hit with ice shuriken, snowflakes turned shuriken, icicles, ice senbon, and even regular senbon. And on top of that what didn't manage to hit them cut them. The only thing the group could register was PAIN. He looked up to see Hinata on her knees, trying to stand and getting a snow shuriken out of her shoulder. Sasuke was on all fours but slowly making his way to his feet. The fake hunter Nin was starting to tire. I spent a lot of chakra on that jutsu. He then looked to see the Uchiha and Hayuga making it to their feet, but the blonde was still having trouble. It pained Hiku to do attack like she was, but even though she found the blonde to be loyal to his friends and have a shining future ahead of him, she had no choice. She had a duty to Zabuza and that was above all else. I'll have to end this now. As Naruto raised his head, his eyes locked on Haku, and somehow, he knew what was going to happen. Haku would attack him to incapacitate him, but actually attack the others as they would go to his aid. Then suddenly as if time slowed down, his fear played out. No, I can't let that happen. Move, move, damn it move. His legs sprung to life as he shouted, Shadow Clone Jutsu. The next thing his friends saw, was Haku on the ground, and Naruto in front of each of them. Hanada looked over to see the Naruto in front of Sasuke poof into smoke. Sasuke then looked over as Naruto said, Hey, Hanada chan are, why you okay? Sasuke was shocked to say the least. He never expected the dobi of the class to jump and save them. He wanted to say something, but one look at Naruto and it spoke volumes. The fox container had Senbon all on his front, and three, in his neck. The look in his eyes, he could tell what was going to happen. Naruto was about to die. No 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 no, Hinata said to herself as she caught the falling blonde. Please be a nightmare, please be a nightmare. Hey, Teme, make sure you take that guy out alright? Naruto said as he looked over to Sasuke. All the Uchiha could do was nod and swiftly attack the fake hunter Nin, trying to hide his tears. He may have not liked Naruto, but he had respected him as even a rival. And seeing a comrade go down, was not something he had wanted to happen, not this early, perhaps not at all. Naruto, please be alright. Hanada choked out trying her best to hold back tears, but it was in vain. Her words were just that, words. No meaning in them. I'm sorry Hanada, but I think I'm done. Naruto then coughed up a bit of blood. Some of it splattering on Hanada's face. Sorry about that. Hanada just shook her head and smiled weakly trying to hide her growing panic. It's okay. Re remember the promises we made? Hanada nodded, not liking where this was going. I comma I don't think I'll be able to keep it for you. It's okay Naruto, it doesn't matter, but it does cough to me. Then out of nowhere tears started coming from Naruto's eyes. That was it for Hanada. Seeing the one person who became her friend on the first day of the academy just start crying even though they had the strongest will known around the leaf village just did that to her. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, Hinata said between her own sobs. Hey, I should be the one apologizing, Naruto retorted weakly. I couldn't even keep my promise to you. You were the only person that, had faith in me that was my age, and I'm glad I got to know you. He then shakily put a hand on her cheek, which Hinata tearfully took. You were the first friend I ever had. You were my best friend. Hanada was frantic, but she didn't know what to do. What was there to do? I guess maybe you could become the next Hokage, right? Hey, Naruto's voice was fading. Hanada wouldn't move even when she heard Sasuke hit the ground unconscious. Has a nice ring to it, don't you think? He flashed his trademark grin as he looked up at Hanada. Hanada, the first female Hokage. The light from his eyes was gone. The last thing he said to her was, Hanada, whatever you do, never, give, up, all the while his hand slipped out of Hanada's grasp and fell to the ground. Wide-eyed Hanada looked at Naruto. He almost looked as if he was asleep, a light smile on the blonde's face, but he wasn't. He would never wake up. Naruto, Naruto, Naruto. Hanada's cry ripped through the bridge. She couldn't believe it. He was gone. Who would be there to always give her the encouragement she always wanted, to spar with her whenever the time arose and not hold back, and worst of all who would she tell that she loved them? She had wanted to tell him so bad even though she wanted to see where life would take them and now, now she will never get the chance. Is this the first time you've seen a comrade die? 
Haku's voice sounded off, as she was leaning back into the mirrors. You should be honored to have one like him. Even though he was the bait he jumped and protected you without hesitation. But then she noticed something, the girl's crying stopped. It was total silence until she heard the girl's voice. Shut up. The mist was suddenly dispersed around the ice mirrors. Hanada turned Naruto over and took out all the weapons that were embedded in the blonde's back. Then after turning Naruto back over, even though it was too late, she kissed him on the cheek. Then Hanada felt it. For the first time in her life, she felt an emotion that every Hyuga was taught to suppress. But then that emotion started to change as suddenly a ring of dark green chakra surrounded the girl's feet. Her emotions turned from sadness, to despair, to anger, and then to pure, unbridled rage. You took away the one I love the most in this world. Hanada's voice sounded angry, but as if she was holding back. Her hands snapping open and closed trying in vain to suppress the inevitable. Then the ring of chakra shot up in nine green pillars. Impossible. Chakra cannot be seen. Haku couldn't believe what she was seeing. Then she looked up to see a dragon's head. Its eyes were blank filled with rage and bloodlust, just like the feeling that the chakra was giving off. Then it all sank back down into the Hyuga girl, whose back was still turned to her as she stood. Hanada's nails grew sharp, her canines grew sharper, and the scales beside her eyes grew dark green as well. Aikama I hate you so much, then as she turned around, the ice style user could only gasp and tremble in fear as she looked into the once lavender eyes of the Hyuga heiress. The girl had dark emerald green eyes and black slid pupils. Haku could have sworn that for a second, one second, there was an enormous dragon behind the girl as she had turned. All, all. Then the girl yelled her voice changed, I'll make you pay for this, what the heck are you doing here? To say Kashina was awake would be an understatement. When one wakes up in the comatose ward of a hospital to see one of their best friends wake up in the bed beside them, it's not exactly a calm needed moment. Well, in the Uzumaki's case anyway. And it didn't help with not making it awkward in Hannah's case. Well you see, it's a funny story really, Hannah laughed nervously. I find it hardly funny that you're in the freaking comatose ward of the hospital, Kashina's rant continued. Okay okay. Just calm down and I'll tell you, man, even after waking up you're still hyper. Kashina glared at her friend but stayed silent. Hannah sighed and then began her story. It had been a few years after Hinata's birth. I was sick, but I was determined to be there for both of my children. So when the day came for Hanabi's birth, I held on. I was really weak, the doctors had already told Hiyashi that there was a huge possibility of me dying of blood loss. But I guess as the third Hokage would say, my will of fire kicked in. And well I passed out. And after all that, here we are. Kashina looked at the bluish haired Hayuga. She had always respected her friends since they were kids. Having a child was not the easiest thing to do. Kashina could attest to that. Especially the circumstances behind Hinata's birth. Speaking of, wasn't Hinata supposed to be born a couple of months after Naruto? Well remember when the doctor warned us to stop hanging out when we became pregnant? Hannah asked. Kashina nodded. He said it's a weird thing that tends to happen when pregnant women hang out all the time. Their cycles tend to run together. But all in all Hinata was fairly healthy. Oh, but how were you able to use your chakra then? Chakra pills. Remember? Kashina chuckled she epily and scratched the back of her head. Well at least we're still alive. Plus we kind of have an idea of how long we have been out. The Hyuga nodded her response. But it makes you wonder. Kashina had a solemn look on her face. Hannah could already tell what she was going to say next. Just how much of our children's lives have we missed? After that a long silence fell on the two. It was pretty scary thinking about how long they were in comas. Well I had Hanabi three years after Hinata so that's a start. But then again, it could be over 20 years by now. Both women shuddered at the thought. Well, there's only one way to find out. The redhead chimed as she threw the covers off of herself, revealing the hospital gown she had on. I wouldn't do that if I were you, Hannah said. What? Why? Well think about it. Being in a coma basically is kind of like being in a deep sleep. All of our body's energy was going into keeping us alive. And our muscles have probably atrophied a bit. Basically it's gonna take a bit to reteach our bodies how to walk again. Kashina scoffed as she swung her legs over the side of the bed, come on Hannah. How hard could it, 
she was cut off as she hit the ground, muffling the word, B, afterwards. Hannah was having a hard time trying not to laugh at her friend's expense. Need some help Kashina? She asked between snickers. Kashina sat herself up a little and said, Shut up Hannah. Hannah then shook her head and closed her eyes, looking for her chakra, and after finding it, sent it through the muscles in her legs and her body and back, making sure that when her feet hit the floor she would stand. And stand she did. Just concentrate chakra through your legs and stand up, slowly. Right. The redhead huffed. It was only a minute or two before Kashina was standing as well. That was easy, she cheerfully said, making her friend sweat drop. Luckily for them their hospital gowns were just that, gowns. All that was left was to check themselves out. Both women were either thinking, I hope we don't scare anybody. Or, we are so gonna give the nurses a heart attack. He he he, take a wild guess. After doing a few test steps, Hannah then turned to walk to the door but found Kashina heading towards another bed surrounded by a curtain. Kashina, what the heck are you doing? What I'm just curious, curious my ass, don't do that. Don't worry I'm just taking a loo. Kashina's voice dropped off once she pulled back the curtain. Kashina, Kashina what is it? Hannah walked up and gasped once the person in the bed's face could be seen. There was silence until they heard a voice behind them. So I see you have finally awakened. Both women spun around to see none other than the third Hokage himself standing at the door. Still shaken by what she had seen, Hannah spoke first, is that who I we think it was? Sarutobi solemnly nodded, a lot has happened since you two were in a coma. I will have some clothes brought to the room. Then just knock on the door and the Anbu will bring you here. The women nodded and Kashina slid the curtain closed again. After their clothes came and they were dressed, soon enough they were in front of the Hokage. He explained everything that happened after they went under. But the women held their composures only changing expression at different things. And after he was done, the women started. Okay, about our kids, the Hokage braced himself. You what? Both of the women's voices were so strong that even with the silence seals on, the building shook. You left my boy at the mercy of the population without even someone to care for him? And you left my daughter at the mercy of the elder council? Now ladies please calm down. Calm down, you want me to calm down? The building was shaken once again. Yes, that would be nice. Luckily, the Hokage had seals over his ears and activated the ones in the room. I would have you know that both Naruto and Hinata have both become genin. Plus, they are very strong. A lot stronger than the other genin give them credit for. The two angry mothers suddenly perked up at their children's well being. What do you mean? When they met after the first day of the academy, those two have been training with each other in secret. The smiles on the mom's faces gave Sarutobi enough cue to continue, and it seems even before that Hinata has had feelings for the young lad. Though I don't know if Naruto can tell that. Hinata seems to be trying the more direct approach. I dare say that her being with Naruto as much as she had has made her a bit bolder. It probably won't be very long before the boy notices. Hana then started chuckling while Kashina started muttering something along the lines of, just like his father. You know Kashina, didn't I bet you that one of our kids would probably end up liking the other? The redhead cringed, yeah, Hannah got a devious smile on her face, you owe me cinnamon buns. How you can remember that bet after so long, easy, we're not in a coma anymore, plus it was the only time I got to see my husband sweat a little. What were his words to Minato? If our kids turn out like our wives and then they have grandchildren. Hannah then started laughing as she continued. He couldn't even complete the sentence. Ha 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 ha. Yamanato's face was priceless. Well, if that is good news, I have more then. The Hokage interrupted, glad to have the women's wrath abated and catching their attention. They should be arriving back in the village any moment now. It would certainly be a welcome surprise for the two to find you two alive and well. The two women looked at each other, then at the old man in front of them. What's the plan? Outside in the village. Ah. It's good to be back in the village, I really missed it, our favorite blonde Jinchuriki yelled as his and Hinata's team were walking to the Hokage Tower. Must you be so loud Dobi? Before we left on the mission you were excited to leave the village. Naruto's teammate Sasuke said to him. What I'm excited I can't help it, you should try it, Naruto replied. If everyone got excited as you did nothing would get done. What was that T-E-M-E? -E? Then, bam, 
Naruto found himself face first in the ground. Courtesy of Sakura. Don't you talk to Sasuke like that Baka? Hanada cringed at the scene, really wondering how Naruto could have a crush on her. Unbeknownst to her though Naruto was thinking the same thing. She walked over and helped him up from the ground and the group continued on. Hanada and Naruto pulled ahead forward a bit to talk ignoring the glares and looks as they passed. Hey Naruto-kun can I ask you something? The Hayuga asked. Yeah, sure. Why do you like Sakura so much? Now to say the least Naruto was surprised by Hanada's question. She never really asked about his team, neither did he about hers. But somehow that question got him thinking. Hanada are you, jealous? Naruto had a sly smirk on his face while Hanada started to go a little pink. And no. She stuttered out quickly gaining her composure. It's just that you go after her so much and all she ever does is knock you upside the head whenever you get in Sasuke-san's face about something. She then looked over to Naruto out of the corner of her eye and saw her friend's face. It was full of thought. Plus, has she ever really praised you for something good you've done? Okay that one came out a bit on the harsh side but it did have to be said. Sorry. It's okay Hinata-chan, I was actually thinking about that myself. Naruto didn't see the shocked look on Hinata's face. Sakura's pretty and smart, but so are you, and then some. And then some huh? Hinata said with a smirk and a raised eyebrow. Yep. The blonde flashed the heiress his signature foxy grin. Now in the back of the group a certain Inazuka was silently seething. What the hell does she see in that dobi? Time skipped after the group has done their report. After both teams' mission report was done, the teams received their pay. So what's going to be our next mission, Hajiji? Naruto excitedly asked. We just got back from a mission dobi. They wouldn't send us on another one right after, Sasuke said. What? Why not? Because not everyone is a stamina freak like you, Kiba added. And what does that supposed to mean? Well if the shoe fits. Naruto was about to say something but he felt Hinata tap his arm, and he in turn, held his peace, albeit a bit grudgingly. The Hokage smiled at the interaction, well I guess you have earned yourselves a much needed rest, also, since the rank of the mission went up, you will be paid accordingly. This incited an excited yell by Naruto, which earned the boy chastisement from most of the other genin. And also about three weeks off, that made the genin happy. Before the two teams left, Sarutobi had Hinata and Naruto stay, so what's up Gigi? Naruto-kun, you should have more respect for the Hokage, Hinata said. It quite alright Hinata. I have gotten used to it, Sarutobi reassured, but onto different matters. You both did well and I'm proud of you, and I have a surprise for both of you. What is it Gigi? Are you teaching us an awesome jutsu? Or, dot are you finally recognizing my strength and making me Hokage? Hanada and the Hokage smiled at the blonde's antics. Full of energy. Just like his mother. I'm afraid not Naruto for both of them, but this will change your life nonetheless. The boy's disappointment was replaced by curiosity. How would you like to know who your mother was? That got his attention, he stood rigid as he nodded, his eyes wide. The third Hokage then handed Naruto a picture of a woman with deep red hair. Naruto turned and found something written on the back. Kashina Uzumaki. Naruto breathed out as he read the name. Then he looked up at the old shinobi in front of him, who nodded and smiled. Naruto couldn't stop the tears that came. He didn't want them to. Finally, even though it was only his mother, it answered a good amount of major questions in his life. He felt Hinata hug him and looked to see her a little teary eyed herself. I'm so happy for you, Naruto kun, Hinata said to the weeping boy. The old Hokage let the kids calm down a little before he gave them their next surprise. He then handed the two another picture. This one had two women, Kashina, and a woman Hinata instantly recognized. That's my mother. The Hokage grunted a happy reply. Yes, they were best friends. The two genin just looked at the picture, amazed that their own moms were friends. Hey, just like us huh Hinata-chan, yeah, I wonder how they became friends. Well why don't you ask them yourselves? Hiruzen added in. The two kids looked at him in confusion, but when he pointed behind them and they turned around, they felt as if their whole world stopped. In front of the two children, were their mothers. It was only a few seconds of blank staring before the two moms found themselves being hugged by their children. Why you're real? 
Naruto's voice managed sound from the folds of his mom's dress. Hanada was too busy crying, just happy that her mom wasn't gone as she thought. As for Naruto it seemed even better than getting the picture, and nothing, absolutely nothing, in this world could make it better. Oh how wrong he was. After both kids had calmed down, both Naruto and Hanada stood by their parents with looks of pride they've never had before. And even though it was childish, Naruto's hand was in his mom's. But if one were to have went through what Naruto had, they would have done the same thing, to be honest I would have, would. I'd be right if I asked if you two wanted to spend your break with your mothers? The Hokage asked, getting an immediate response from the two genin. Well actually, I have an idea. Kashina spoke up. Then she looked at Hana who had a smirk on her face and nodded. Both turned back to the Hokage and said, I humbly wish to train my son, daughter. And to the genin's further surprise, the Hokage said, yes you may. Now this, once again shocked Naruto into silence. Now not only was his mom alive, but she was going to be training him. There were only a few words that could describe how it felt. This, is, awesome ya, yeah. no. Most of the people in the room laughed, even some of the Anbu chuckled, but Kashina was a little mortified. Oh great, he picked up my bad habit, don't worry Kashina-san. This would be the first time in a while that he has said it in a long time. Hiruzen spoke up, now let's talk about how we are going to do this. The Hokage had just came up with a plan and, to Naruto at least, this was going to be the best prank ever. Naruto was lying down on the handrail of the small bridge where he was to wait for his sensei. He had folded up the top portion of his jumpsuit and started used it as a pillow while he now wore his headband around his neck while he napped. It had been a pretty eventful few months for the boy. The time spent training with his mother was definitely not wasted. His hyperactive tendencies had died down a little and it seemed that he almost had what you would call a sense of peace. Sure the D ranks that came every now and then were annoying but he just worked it off during training. Plus he found out a lot of interesting things about himself and his family that gave him a whole new appreciation on life. Hanada was about the same, waiting for her sensei and team to show. She kept up the shy act just for show and it was paying off. Though she still felt saddened that her cousin Neji had still been treating her as coldly as ever, and the elders weren't helping things either. She had been made to fight her sister as, training, for the entire week straight, and it was starting to get frustrating for her. She didn't want her sister to start growing an ego but it was starting to show. But that just fueled her own determination to show them what she was made of. And to finally get Naruto's full attention, but that would come when she felt it was the right time. Speaking of, Hana had revealed herself to be very much alive. And to the Hyuga elders' horror and shock, she was not happy to put the events that happened at the Hyuga estate. Hiyashi for the first time in the Hyuga heiress life, cried. The elders were reminded of why Hana was a force to be reckoned with. And best of all Hinata and Hanabi were able to be with their mother. It was kind of awkward for the younger sibling, but after a bit of time, the Hyuga mother hoped she would get used to her being around the house now. As both Genin waited for their teams to arrive, they both reminisced about the start of their training. Flashback Jutsu Naruto, Hanada, and their mothers stood in the middle of an empty training field. It had been a week since their reunion. To say the two genin were still on cloud 9 would be an understatement. The two still couldn't believe their own moms wanted to train them. But the biggest surprise came after they were told of the plan. The plan was Kashina and Hana would stay at the former's house. Meanwhile Naruto and Hanada would go about life as usual. Their training would actually last for two months until the Chunin exams coming up leaving the last two days for a bit of rest. And in those two days, Hana would reveal herself to the Hyugas. And that was going to be awesome seeing the looks on their faces, as Kashina put it, as for Kashina, she would reveal herself in her own time. Knowing Kakashi like he did, Hiruzen had a good idea that he along with the other sensei of the rookies were planning on nominating their genin for it. Okay you too. Now that we have a good place we can train in private we can get down to training. Kashina said proudly. Naruto gave a whoop while Hanada nodded her head with eagerness. All right then, Hanada come with me, Hana said, and with that Hanada gave Naruto one last smile and walked off with her mother. Naruto watched until they were both gone before hearing his mother voice bring him back to reality, so, do you like her? Naruto's shocked and red face was a dead giveaway when spun to face her. Do you want me to tell her for you my little Naru-chan? 
the former Jinchuriki teased. N no. I'm Ennis, I mean. Naruto was cut off by his mom's laughter. I'm just joking Naruto. Naruto breathed a sigh of relief. I'll leave the romantics to you. But remember this, the redhead poked her son's chest where his heart was. Love comes from here, she then poked his head, not here. A thoughtful look passed through Naruto's features before he smiled and replied, got it Ka-chan. Satisfied with her son's answer, Kashina smiled and said, good, now that all that is out of the way, let's get to training. All right, with Hinata. Hinata was panting with her hands on her knees. Her mom had told her to attack her with all her strength. Of course she thought that was a bit crazy, but her mom quickly proved her wrong. Even though it had only been two days since she had woken up from her coma, her mom was able to dodge every hit she had thrown at her. It was almost as if her mother was dancing. Then things had gotten bad when her mom had shifted from defense to offense. Hannah was almost a blur. It was like she never was in a coma to begin with, but what really got the young Jenin's attention was her mother's last palm strike. Though she had blocked it, the strike had not only knocked her off her feet, but it had sent her flying. All the way, into a tree, which broke as soon as the girl's back impacted with it. Luckily Hinata thought to cushion the impact with her chakra. I see your training with Naruto has helped your stamina, Hannah said, coming out of her stance. If you were anyone else, you would probably be knocked out. Thank huff you huff ka-san. Hinata replied in between breaths. Suddenly Hannah was in front of her with a big mischievous smile on her face. Don't go thanking me just yet. From what you've shown me the normal Jiyukan seems to be a bit stiff for you. What do you mean? At certain times when I attacked you, I noticed you wanted to dodge my attacks, but instead you chose to stand your ground and try to block or parry the hits. Hanada could only look down ashamed of herself. To be honest she had hoped that her mom wouldn't notice. She should have known better than to think that. I guess it runs in the family. Hanada's head shot back up with a confused look on it. I was never cut out for the Jiyukan either. That's why I made my own style, called the Juho, or the Gentle Step. That's how come you moved so gracefully. Exactly, the Hayuga mother replied. Then she walked up to Hinata and whispered something in her daughter's ear. Then nearly broke into laughter at the look of pure shock and confusion. Now that we have gotten that out of the way, let's get back to it. I believe that's been enough rest. It's going to take a huge amount of work if you're going to learn my variation of the Gentle Fist. But if you manage to learn it I may teach you a trick or two of my own, and one my sensei, and Kashina taught me. And also make no mistake, just because I'm your mother doesn't mean I'll take it any easier on you. Hanada's eyes lit up at the prospect of learning some new techniques, that little bit of Naruto had rubbed off on her. She would most definitely get everyone's attention, Naruto's included. Then her eyes narrowed into a determined look. She was going to be a lot stronger. Especially if she wanted to achieve her dreams. With Naruto. Man Ka Chan, you hit hard, Naruto said as he lay on the ground breathing hard. Kashina for her part was breathing a bit heavy but otherwise okay. The two had just finished an all out spar and for the most part, it was enjoyable. Well I at least know where to start at. His taijutsu really isn't that bad, but it still needs a lot of work. Plus on top of that, were those Jiyukan moves that he used earlier? She smiled a bit. But those shadow clones he used would come in handy for what I want to teach him. Kashina thought as her son started to get to his feet a bit shakily. She pulled out a small square sheet of paper. But let's see if he can learn it. She then handed the paper to Naruto who eyed it and then her. This, she explained, is chakra paper. When a person filters their chakra into it, the paper will react in one of five ways. Thus telling you what your affinity is. Affinity? Yep your elemental affinity. You read about them in the academy right? Naruto nodded. Amazingly it was one of the rare times that Naruto had ever paid attention in class. Yeah, but how will I know what element I have? If it burns up, it's fire. If it gets soggy, water. Splits, it's wind. Crumbles away, it's earth. And if it crinkles up, it's lightning. Kashina finished and gave the paper to a now standing Naruto, who channeled his chakra into the paper. The paper spit in two. And it seems your affinity is for wind. This is perfect for what I'm going to help you do. Naruto looked at his temporary sensei with a raised eyebrow, what do you mean? Kashina merely smirked, turned to some tree in the distance and started a series of hand signs, tiger, 
rabbit, snake, boar, dog, dragon. Then she slapped her hands together for a final seal and closed her eyes in concentration. Naruto at first was confused, until his mother was covered in a light layer of light green chakra. But what really caught his attention was when the wind started to whip around her causing her hair to billow up. Then Kashina moved her right arm up and her left down, hand pointing both skyward and to the ground. Then as she moved them in a circle the air seemed to collect at a single point. As her hands came parallel to each other she said. Wind style, her eyes then snapped open, spun on her foot and yelled. Savage Gale. Thrusting her palms out in front of her, the jutsu released a tunnel of wind that crashed into the waiting foliage. The amount of damage was untold. Not only was the ground uprooted, but the trees that were the target, which were at least 100 yards away were destroyed, no decimated. The sharp winds had sliced and diced them. Kashina turned to see her son with his mouth hanging open, and his eyes as large as dinner plates. Among the basics, Kashina started, managing to instantly snap Naruto out of his shock. I'm going to teach you how to create your own jutsu, showing where Naruto got his grin from. Naruto only flashed his own grin and simply said, let's do this. Flashback release. Man, who would have though you could use shadow clones that way? He thought to himself. Suddenly he was awakened abruptly by a loud, Naruto wake up. He fell over and shot back up looking around to find an angry Sakura in front of him. Oh hey Sakura-chan, Naruto said acting like the same old him, what's up? What's up is that you've been asleep for so long that even Kakashi-sensei has been waiting for you idiot. Saw that coming, Naruto thought. Glad I got over her and all but honestly her attitude really stinks. Ah, now that Naruto is awake, I can finally tell you the news. Their sensei pulled out three forms. I've decided to nominate you three for the chunin exams. Next thing everybody knew, Naruto had grabbed one of the sheets and was yelling, thank you, repeatedly in rapid succession. All right that's enough, Kakashi said after peeling Naruto off of him. Take these forms to the academy in two days, and hand them in. Don't be late. Right. The three chorused. Naruto was then off faster than anyone had seen him move, leaving a trail of dust in his wake. He seems excited. Their sensei thought as he watched his genin leave, but it may be slight, but Naruto seems a bit different. He had no idea how right he was. Meanwhile, as Naruto was running back to his temporary place, as he had now dubbed it, he couldn't help but chuckle to himself. Oh wait till Ka-chan hears about this. The Chunin exams were going to be very interesting this year. Are you stupid or something? Naruto had just managed to catch the scroll that his teammate was so adamant at throwing to some random enemy. Most likely the one that blew him away. Naruto you idiot, now isn't the time for arguing, this guy is out of our league, Sasuke yelled. Oh yeah? If this person is so out of our league, what's stopping her from killing us after she gets the scroll? Naruto watched with silent satisfaction at Sasuke's dumbfounded look. The Uchiha obviously hadn't weighed the options and fell right into the arms of the feeling of self-preservation. Naruto looked out, suddenly, a giant snake head butted the branch that Naruto was standing on. The blonde genin immediately righted himself, only to get knocked into and embedded in a tree. Ah! Oh, dang, for something so big it moves fast. So you're the one who got away from my other pet, the unknown ninja said, but I can see why. You're smarter than you seem. I'll take that as a compliment. Naruto then jumped away from the snake once again. Take this. Naruto flung two paper bombs attached to Kanai into the snake's eyes, blowing its head off. Impressive but, I've wasted enough time with you, time to get what I came for. The ninja made a few hand signs and summoned another snake. Now let's see how well you can handle yourself Sasuke-kun. The snake and its summoner then charged Sasuke. All the Uchiha could do was watch as the giant serpent grew closer. But in a flash of orange, Naruto had managed to stop the reptile stabbing two kanai into its muzzle. You're not scared, are ya? Naruto's voice shook Sasuke out of his reverie. The black-eyed boy looked and found Naruto's now red eyes staring at him. The words bringing him back to what he called the blonde on their mission in wave. Suddenly, something wrapped itself around Naruto and hoisted him up violently. Hey let me go you creep! Naruto yelled as he tried to loosen himself from what he now knows is the ninja's tongue. Said ninja pulled up the front of Naruto's jacket, 
So this is the seal that houses the nine tails. This boy would make a great tool for me. She opened her hand and on every fingertip a purple flame ignited. But for right now, he's just in my way. Five pronged seal. Naruto cried out in pain as he felt what vestiges of the fox's chakra faded away, and his consciousness fast following. With all the strength he could muster, he lurched forward, head butted his captor, took the scroll and tossed it with all he had in Sakura's direction. Sakura catch. And just before he blacked out he saw Sakura catch the scroll. Time skip. After the encounter with the sound genin. After Naruto had woken up, no thanks to Choji and Shikamaru, the memories of the previous fight came back to him. Ah man, I feel like I just fell off the Hokage monument. Naruto you're awake. A voice from outside the makeshift cave sounded. Naruto then walked out to find a very worried, beaten up, Sakura. Sakura what happened to your hair? Naruto exclaimed. He actually thought it suited his female teammate but for the sake of playing the fool he kept quiet. Yeah, he he, I sort of cut it like this, his teammate replied. What happened while I was out? Sakura then explained all that happened to her while he and Sasuke were out. Then a thought occurred to him, hey Sakura, did you catch that scroll yesterday? Thankfully she nodded and pulled out the heaven scroll. Naruto breathed a sigh of relief. But we still need another scroll. Sasuke spoke up making his presence known. Suddenly the bushes rattled and shook. Everybody who could still fight got ready for an attack, but what came out was not what they were expecting. Hey boss we're back. Naruto's clones came out of the bushes, smiles on their faces and all. Judging by the smiles, I'm guessing that the little expedition I sent you guys on paid off, Naruto said. The clones merely nodded and pulled out two scrolls each. One of them saying, did you really have to ask? Then they tossed them over, to which Naruto caught two, and Shikamaru caught the others. So do we all that the scrolls that we need? Naruto asked, to which he got a universal nod from everyone. Well let's get go. Gra. Naruto was cut off by an immense roar. W what was that? Ino shakily said. I don't know but let's get out of here guys. Choji spoke up. Suddenly a yell sounded out along with the bushes in the general direction shook. Then Kiba broke through with both Hinata and Shino hot on his heels. Run you bunch of idiots. Run. He shouted as team 8 passed by in a near blur. As soon as the group turned back to the vegetation, a bear the size of what Naruto would describe it, a freaking house, burst forth from its green confines. Ah! It didn't take long for the other genin to catch up with their fellow graduates. Shino, what the heck did you guys do to make that thing so mad? Naruto yelled as they ran. Well, first we had the unfortunateness of being in its territory, and... R-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-
Haruka said with a sweat drop. Well let me be the first to tell you congratulations on passing the second stage of the Chunin exams. Naruto whooped, and Hinata smiled. Well since you guys have a couple of days left you guys can relax and prepare for the next test afterwards. Yes Haruka sensei. The teams tell their former teacher. Then without thinking Naruto walked to his team's room, plopped down on the bed face first, and was out like a light. He had totally forgotten about the incident that nearly got him and his friends killed. The insect user could only say, I suppose I would just have to tell him tomorrow. It wouldn't be until the day of when Shino told Naruto. Hey Hinata, Ino called. Ha oh, yes Ino san, Hinata replied. I wanted to say thank you and all, for saving me I mean. It's no problem at all. The heiress said with a smile. After all, it was Naruto that blew up the bear. Yeah, how did he do that anyway? Hinata had a thoughtful expression on her face before shrugging. I don't know. Then she walked off to find her team's room. Oh that is crap and you know it Hinata. Ino thought with a smirk as she watched her fellow genin walk away. Feel something off too Ino. Shikamaru said walking up to his teammate who nodded. Same here. Naruto almost decked Choji. Ino turned to him with disbelief on her face. Yeah, that what we get when we decided to wake him up by bopping him on the head. As soon as I hit him, he shot awake grabbed Choji by the collar. Thought he was going to follow through but, all he did was yell at us when he figured it was us. Whoa, yeah, well let's get Choji and get some rest. Knowing him he's already at the cafeteria. Ino nodded again and walked to the cafeteria with her teammate. But in her mind all she could think about was what had transpired and what Shikamaru had said to her. There was so much that had happened over a couple of days. On top of that, the seemingly quiet Hinata jumping into action at the blink of an eye, and even more unbelievable, the loud and brash Naruto reacting to the slightest, well not slightest, pain and automatically shifting to attack mode. I can't believe I'm saying this, but this is so troublesome. Naruto had met up with Shino in the hallway after he had breakfast, the insect user reminding the blonde of what had happened in the forest a day ago. Oh, hey Shino, sorry about yesterday, but I was bushed. It's understandable, the event of yesterday also left me tired. Naruto's face then took on a more serious look. If Shino wasn't the way he was, he would have had a look of shock on his face. But instead he briefly raised an eyebrow and began his tale. And no, there will be no flashbacks within flashbacks. We had just gotten a second scroll when Kiba decided it would be a good idea to rest. He looked to see if Naruto was following along before continuing. I could tell that Hinata-san's mind was on something else whenever I looked at her. That was when Kiba-san asked about you. About me? Shino nodded, he asked her what she saw in you and why you two always hung out. Naruto didn't like where that was going, what did it matter to Kiba if he and Hinata hung out? That was when my insects started picking something up. I tried to get their attention but Kiba-san yelled at me to stay out of it. That was when I noticed two things. One. Hanada-san's fists were balled up and shaking, she almost looked ready to explode when Kiba-san started to talk exceedingly negative about you. And two, a low growling sound came from the bushes behind our group. It didn't take a rocket scientist to know what was going to happen next. As the growling was getting louder and closer, my insects started to act more and more erratic. That was when Hanada-san yelled at the top of her lungs for Kiba-san to, as you would say, shut the hell up. That threw Naruto for a loop. He had been on the receiving end of Hinata's anger only once, and it was enough. But to hear Hinata cuss, that strangely brought a smirk to his face. Wow, I didn't know she had that in her, and the rest, well you heard already, Shino concluded. Naruto nodded, but something was bothering him badly. Why would Kiba do that Shino? He could have easily smelled the bear before it attacked. Heck even Akamaru, probably smelled it right? Indeed. Akamaru also smelled the bear and tried to get his partner's attention, but Kiba-san was too caught up in his own jealousy to see it. Naruto cast Shino a questioning look. Jealousy? Kiba likes Hinata. Shino said simply. Kiba's animalistic logic mainly tells him to compete with another male that shares the same feelings as he. Naruto's understanding of Shino's words appeared on his face in the form of a light blush. I don't know what you're talking about, but thanks for telling me Shino. He then proceeded to walk away, quickly. Shino's smirk was hidden under the collar of his coat, Naruto Uzumaki, 
you and Hinata-san are horrible liars when it comes to your personal feelings. Flashback release. As Naruto's mind came back to the present he thought about Shino's words, Okay, I admit I like Hinata-chan. But I don't even know how she feels about me. And then there's Kiba, I don't know what to do about him. But I know one thing, I'm going to need to have a word with him about the forest incident. Penny for your thoughts. A voice broke him out of his thoughts, he turned to see Hinata with a slight smile covering a worried expression. I'm just thinking, he replied. Would I be right if I guessed that Shino told you about what happened? She watched Naruto nod his head sheepishly, her joining in, yeah, not my best moment. But I wasn't your fault. I know, but I still feel bad about yelling at Kiba like that. She noticed Naruto stiffen a bit. He had that coming. Naruto-kun I don't want you two to fight. Well what if we have a match, Naruto said lowly. The silence that followed was only filled with the sounds of battle below. Naruto had turned away afterwards but a hand on his shoulder gently pulled him back around as Sapphire met Lavender. Just don't do something you're going to regret, then the announcer Hayate's voice called their attention. Now for the next match, the entire room was silent as they watched the names shift again and again until it landed on two names. Hanada Hayuga vs Neji Hayuga Naruto let his gaze wander over to Hanada, her own gaze had wandered and locked onto her opponent, Neji. The elder of the two Hayuga's gaze pierced into her almost like a blade. She felt herself starting to shake but managed to push it down before her cousin would notice, but judging by the smirk he had he already seen. But that smile quickly disappeared as Naruto stepped into his line of sight. Naruto's gaze held a calm but frowning look to them. The other Genin and Janin almost thought they were going to fight, but Neji's voice broke through the tension. You won't be able to protect her this time, Uzumaki. Naruto calmly replied, I won't have to, Neji. His reply had a distinct edge in it that everyone noticed. These two have met before, was the thought that ran through their heads as Neji walked down the stairs. Naruto turned behind him to see Hinata with her head down. Hinata, Hinata-chan, look at me. Hinata lifted her head slowly to meet Naruto's gaze. I know I've only seen you a few times after the mission in Wave, but I can tell that you're a lot stronger now. Don't think about the past, just think about the here and now. You. Can. Win. All you have to do is believe in yourself. He then much to everyone's surprise, including Hinata's, took her hand, because I do. Hinata closed her eyes and took a deep breath. Her eyes opened back up, revealing a steeled resolve and determination. Now go kick his ass. Then to everyone's surprise, Hinata vaulted over the railing to the floor below. You know Naruto. You have a way with words. Kakashi spoke up after watching his hyperactive Genin give a very moving speech. Are you and her together now? He then teased. His answer was a now sputtering Naruto. I don't know what you're talking about, then why is your face turning red? Sakura added slyly. S Sakura chan. Naruto then proceeded to hide his face in his jacket. J just watched the match. Never thought I'd see the day. Naruto stuttering. Shikamaru said with a smirk. Choji nodded alongside Ino who was laughing. Down on the arena floor. All right, if no one has any objections, Hayate raised his hand looking at the two combatants, then lowered his hand, begin. Both fighters remained motionless, until Neji spoke up, before we begin, I would advise you to quit now. Hinata's eyes slightly narrowed as her cousin continued to speak, we both know that it is pointless. No matter what training you went through, the end result will be the same. He shifted his gaze to the catwalk, and this time, your little friend will not be here to save you. Neji, Hinata cut in. Are you done? Now it was Neji's turn to narrow his eyes. Because if you think I'm going to give up here, the Hyuga heiress then slowly shifted into the Jayukan stance, her Byakugan activating along the way. You are sadly mistaken. Have it your way. The branch member replied, shifting into his own and his Byakugan activating as well. Then they attacked, Hanada threw a palm strike first with Neji blocking then retaliating with his own, which was also blocked. This process continued on as Chakra visibly flew from every block and parry made until Hanada found an opening. Now, but Neji backed away managing to still get grazed by it. Hanada then allowed herself to smirk as she saw Neji shift to get used to the Chakra point she managed to close. On the catwalk Naruto smirked as well, that got him. He then noticed the looks of confusion thrown his way. 
All she did was graze him though, Sakura asked. Yeah she didn't hit him full on, Ino added. That actually may be all that's needed. Sounded a voice from behind them. They turned to see Might Guy, Neji's Jonan instructor and Team 10 leader, and Rock Lee, Neji's teammate. If one were to look at the two they would think they were looking in a mirror sideways. The only difference being in height and the fact that Lee has this hands and forearms wrapped up. Both were watching the match while talking. Guy also noticed that Lee's grip on the railing had tightened. That's what makes the Hyuga clan the most powerful clan in the Leaf Village, and the most formidable of fighters, Lee spoke. What do you mean? Then Guy took over. Their taijutsu is unique, passed down through the generations. The taijutsu Lee and I employ is used to break bones create contusions. Concentrating only on external damage. The Hyuga is to attack internal organs and the chakra network where the chakra flows. It's more, subtle. It may not be as exciting to watch, but the damage adds up over time. Naruto chuckled dryly, yeah, and on top of that it hurts, a lot. Most of the genin turned to Naruto, who scratched the back of his head sheepishly, I made the mistake of asking her to go all out, chakra included. I was in pain for the rest of that day. Sakura gasped in unbelief, but as she looked back at the renewed fight below she heard her sensei's voice. You see no matter how much you train, your internal organs can never be built up. This kind of attack makes any kind of ninja vulnerable. Back on the arena floor Hinata was pressing her offensive as hard as she could. Come on Hinata faster, you can do this. She's giving him all he can handle, Shino thought. Hinata, Kuranai thought. She was one of the few people informed about Hinata's mother. She even met the woman once. Letting herself smile she let her thoughts convey what she was feeling. Hana san must have put you through your paces. Attacking the chakra network, Sakura mused then turned to Naruto. These guys are, incredible. Naruto turned to her with a smirk. Yep. Hanada lashed out with a palm strike again, making Neji back up again. The two waited only a few seconds and as the distance shrunk, both Hyugas pulled one arm back and attacked. A visual display of chakra appeared on both sides of the hunched over fighters. Did she get him? Sakura spoke to no one in particular. Please be all right, Naruto hoped, but his hopes were dashed he heard her cough. Neji backed up with a triumphant smirk as he backed up, revealing that while he had struck Hinata in the chest, he moved her arm to strike his shoulder. Hinata then shoved Neji's arm out of the way to try to counter but Neji just caught her arm and struck it with two fingers. He then rolled her sleeve down, w wait you mean? Yes. I could already see your chakra points. You're nothing more than a dart board to me. He then hit her with a chakra less palm thrust knocking her away. He heard Naruto call her then looked up at him with a sneer, then looked back at the fallen Hyuga heiress who was struggling to get up. Now do you see? The branch member stated. No matter how hard you try, no matter who trains you, he saw Hinata freeze up as she was getting to her feet. You will always and forever be a failure. That is your fate, your destiny. Don't listen to him Hinata-chan, Naruto shouted. You can win. I know you can. Hanada rose to her full height, her eyes blocked from view by her bangs, and then lifted her hands together. It was then the audience noticed something. Hey, when did she get her hands bandaged? Really, Naruto? I thought you would have noticed holding your girlfriend's hand felt different than normal. Kakashi chimed in, teasing at the same time. Shush, shut up, Kakashi sensei. Naruto stammered, he didn't deny it though. As Hanada removed the bandages around her left hand, it revealed an ornate marking. The marking looked like a tribal sun tattoo. She then spat out a bit of blood out of her mouth, and made three hand signs, ox, dog, and rabbit, and then whispered, reserve seal. Healing. Release. Suddenly Hinata's body was enshrouded in a light green aura. Whoa what kind of chakra is that? Ino asked. Medical chakra. Kuranai answered. She's using the medical chakra that's stored in the seal to accelerate her healing. The once the medical chakra ran its course, it faded away. Hanada then took a deep breath and breathed out, glad that the damage she took from the hit to the chest wasn't a fatal blow. Then she raised her head and gave Neji a glare that Naruto remembered real well. Oh, what is it? Sakura asked. Hanada's mad. He then looked to Lee and said, Lee, I'm afraid you might not get to fight Neji in the finals. Upon seeing the student of the green beast giving him a confused look, he just said, 
Let's just say that I did something that Hinata made me pay for, in pain. Is Hinata that strong? Ino spoke up, curious about the former shy girl on the arena floor. All Naruto said was, she hits harder than Sakura, a lot harder. You know Neji, I pity you. Hinata spoke. You're living in a past that neither you nor I had anything to do with. Oh really? Neji scoffed. Of course someone from the main branch would say that. You live your prim and proper lives while the branch does all the work. You even got that blonde pest up there too. Leave. Naruto. Out of this. Hanada cut off, Neji merely scoffed again but left it alone. I'll give you one last chance. Forfeit this match, or I won't be able to hold back. Hanada got back into the Jayukan stance and her Baikugan sprung back to life, I never asked you to. This time Neji was the aggressor, charging in. He threw a palm strike aimed at Hanada's head. Then to his surprise Hanada tilted her head and dodged the blow. His surprise was repaid when Neji then received a fist to the abdomen that threw him back a surprising distance. He leapt back to his feet to see Hanada standing in the same place she was before. Only her fist was still extended. The branch member then gave a sneer, so now you're foregoing the Hyuga style. That there just prove how much of a failure you are. I'm not foregoing anything, the Hyuga heiress calmly replied. The Hyuga style is predictable to those who have fought a Hyuga before. So, she then got back into the Jayukan stance once more, but with her right hand by her side and curled into a fist. I decided to improvise a bit. Seems to me like a desperate attempt to prove me wrong, but, it is futile, your fate here is to lose. Neji shifted into the Jayukan stance, and you will. Enough talk then, I will prove to you that fate has no hold on us, even if I have to beat it out of you. Tough talk, but can you back it up? Neji took off at full speed this time and lashed out with a palm strike. Hanada dodged and retaliated with one of her own, which Neji blocked, but the older Hyuga was pushed back. How is she doing that? Neji growled out as he blocked another strike and tried to retaliate with one of his own. The opposite held the same for him as well. He just couldn't land a hit on her, it was downright frustrating, it was time for another approach. Hanada ducked and dodged Neji's strikes then threw another strike at her opponent, who parried it away and got some distance. Not wanting to let go of her advantage Hinata chased after him, just as planned. Up on the catwalk Naruto noticed something was off, because when Neji got distance he just stopped. That would be a bad idea, unless, Hinata don't. Too late. Neji yelled as Hinata was within a foot of him. 8 trigrams. Palm rotation. Neji spun on the ball of his foot and a dome of chakra sprung to life catching Hinata's right arm in it. You could barely hear the wild sounds of the dome for Hinata's cries of pain. Suddenly Neji stopped and using the momentum of his previous jutsu, he bludgeoned Hinata in the abdomen with a palm strike hard enough to send her flying into the wall on the other side of the room, cracking it on impact. Hinata-chan. Naruto called. This was bad he had seen Hinata worn out but that jutsu had went beyond that. The chakra from being caught in the dome had shredded her coat sleeve to almost ribbons and the arm beneath. All that remained was the now motionless body that wore them. The other Jenin and Janin looked on at the brutality of what had just happened. Some looked away while some just mumbled words like, after all that. Sakura and Ino especially looked on in shock. Here was the girl who was the shyest person in their class, now fighting harder than both of them combined. And to see her take a hit like that, it was almost too much to watch. Meanwhile, Neji was slumped over panting from fatigue but he let a devious smirk come to his face. It may have cost me some chakra, but it was worth it. He had shown that main branch failure the difference between elites and failures. He then looked up to see Naruto yelling his heart out for Hinata to get up. Yell as much as you want pest, she won't be getting up for. His train of thought was interrupted when he saw the prone form of Hinata start to move. Everyone watched with tense expressions as the Hyuga heiress started to get up. Naruto intensely tried to keep himself rooted in his spot. As much as he wanted to help, he couldn't. He would be risking getting her disqualified. Come on Hinata. Get up. Hinata got to her feet holding her arm. It was bleeding badly but it was healing. Why don't you just give up? Neji called out confidently. You're bound by fate to lose this match. An. This will be the first time I'm doing this, but I wanted to try it. Insert song. Bleach Ost. Hollowed.
It took Hanada a while to catch her breath but she spoke with as much determination as she could muster. I can't afford to lose. Her eyes closed and then snapped back open, I made a promise to a friend and I intend to stand by it, so if you plan on trying to make me give up, as I said before, you are sadly mistaken. She then shakily got back into her custom stance. I'm not the one bound by fate Neji, it's you. Neji's expression visibly changed to rage at that point, fine then, he charged at Hanada, his entire being laced in killer intent. If he was calmer, Neji would have caught the hidden smirk on his cousin's face. He threw his palm forward, only to be met with the crunch of wood. Suddenly he felt an intense grip on his wrist. That's what I was waiting for, shouted the voice of the owner. What? Neji's confused face was answered when he looked over at Hinata's right hand. The bandages that surrounded it burned off, and with a loud yell, an intense amount of chakra was released, great enough that the wind was blowing around the room itself. What an intense amount of chakra, was the main thought that went around all the Janin's thoughts. What have you been teaching your Jenin, Kuranai? Asuma said as he was able to regain his bearings. All Kuranai could do was shake her head as she adamantly watched the seal that was hidden on her student's right hand glow and chakra start to form around Hinata's arm. Not wanting to get hit by whatever Hinata had planned he tried to get loose, let go, but Hinata just dodged the palm strikes to the head. My turn, she said with a growl, her scales becoming more pronounced. Suddenly the amount of chakra shot up as if formed a giant lion head. The last thing Neji saw before the hit, a very angry lion. Go for it, exclaimed Naruto's voice, Lion's Fist. True to its name, Hanada's fist impacted her cousin and the jutsu engulfed him, chakra and all. The explosion that followed caused a shockwave that nearly threw everyone off their feet. To think she completed a jutsu you could Hana, the old Hokage thought. Ost end. When the dust cleared, it revealed Neji lying motionless on the ground, body smoking and cloths torn to shreds, and Hinata standing tall and proud. Hayate went to check on the fallen Hayuga. Luckily he found a pulse. He looked and gave a nod to the younger Hayuga, which garnered a relieved sigh from the girl. But just as he was about to call the match. No, everyone's eyes shot down to a struggling Neji. I refuse, I refuse to lose to a failure. Luckily Hinata was still standing in the same spot. She took a deep breath, and as Neji charged, she moved her headband to her forehead squared her shoulders, dodged the angry palm thrust from her cousin, leaned back in. Clang two forehead protectors met, and the older owner of one collapsed in a heap. Naruto style. Head smash, Hanada said with a smirk. Everyone looked at Naruto with a, really, look on their faces. What? It's an awesome jutsu I made up, they all sweat dropped. The winner of this match is Hanada Hayuga, Hayate announced. Hanada beamed at the praise that came from her friends on the catwalk, but that was interrupted by the throbbing pain in the front of her skull, ow. After she got to up the stairs, she hoped that Naruto wouldn't swing her around in a fit of joy. Alright good job Hanada-chan, but it was not to be. Naruto-kun, as much as I enjoy you swinging me around and all, my head is killing me, please stop. Oh, sorry Hanada-chan. He put her back down and scratched the back of his head all the while keeping his wide happy grin on his face. I didn't think you would ever use my special jutsu. Hanada laughed lightly, the headache ebbing away very slowly, yeah, neither did I but Neji Nisan was a tough opponent. Not even my lion fist could take him out. So that was the name of that technique, man, when I saw you were about to clobber him I just got amped. I heard. Hanada replied with a smile, while they were talking. All Sakura and Ino could do was gape at how wide the gap between them and Hinata had gotten. She had went from being the shy girl in class that came behind the two Kunoichi, to blazing a trail in front of them so fast it seemed next to impossible to catch up. As it stood now, of the three of them, Hinata was the most powerful Kunoichi no, ninja of all of them. Hey Hinata, said Hayuga turned to look at her fellow Kunoichi, don't think that just because you now have a super powered punch that you're gonna beat us. Ino challenge. And when we've gotten stronger, we'll see who is the strongest out of all of us, Sakura added. Behind Hinata Naruto smirked, he had a feeling that when Hinata showed what she could really do, the gap that she placed would become a challenge to his teammate and her friend. Hinata smiled and held up a fist, I will look forward to that day then, and believe me, 
Next time I'll have two super-powered punches. What a wonderful display of youth. Guy called out, effectively ruining the moment. Hanada-chan I will strive to be stronger than you now. Lee called after showing up directly in front of Hanada. Huh, was all the heiress could say at the display. Well Hanada-chan, Naruto said. It turns out that Neji was Lee's rival. And since you beat him just now, you are now my rival, Lee completed. Oh, great, Hanada said with a nervous smile on her face. What have I gotten myself into? Then the announcement came, the next match will now be decided. The words on the screen shifted again and again until it stopped. When everyone spied the names, they spotted the competitors already glaring at each other. Everyone had also happened to miss the gasp of worry from Hanada. Naruto Uzumaki, vs. Kiba Inazuka, time to settle this once and for all, was the thought of both fighters. The room was quiet. The tension in the air thicker than it was with the last match. On the stands the Hyuga heiress watched with a mixture of anticipation and worry. Anticipation in seeing her best friend and teammate in action, but also worry over the look on the Inazuka's face. Hanada knew well enough the scope of Kiba's crush on her, including his jealousy towards Naruto. And if the murderous look in his eyes was anything to go by, Naruto was in big trouble. On the other hand though Naruto was giving Kiba a more neutral look, but his body language spoke differently. In fact he looked just as eager to tear into the dog-like clansman. She swallowed a lump in her throat. No matter how much she tried to reassure herself, she knew this fight was going to get out of hand. And, someone was going to be seriously hurt. Man, I've never seen those two so serious, Eno said. You would think they would be trash talking each other by now but they are just standing there stock still. I know what you mean, Sakura replied. Here I thought Naruto was going to be the first to say something. That only means that this fight is going to get ugly, Shino chimed in, getting everyone's attention. What do you mean Shino? Kurenai asked. Shino merely pointed at Kiba who was telling Akamaru to get back. Arena floor, if both combatants are ready, Hayate announced. Both Genin nodded, begin. Kiba didn't waste time, doing a couple of hand signs, ninja art, beast mimicry, all fours jutsu. True to its name, Kiba was down on all fours, his body leaking chakra. He then took off in a blur. Naruto saw this and crossed his arms in time to block the elbow though the force still knocked him back a foot or two. Naruto then retaliated, sending some chakra into the bottom of his foot he managed to nearly catch his opponent off guard with a right cross. Kiba ducked and aimed a kick at Naruto, who jumped and spun with an axe kick, forcing Kiba to jump away. They stood apart for only a moment and then rushed each other once again. Kiba started swinging lefts and rights in which Naruto blocked and countered with his own. Eventually the slugfest stopped when both ninja caught the other's punch. Naruto then jumped, pulling his knee into Kiba's chin, spun and kicked him away, landing as Kiba rolled away and leapt back to his feet. You know, aside from my own, you have a bad temper. Naruto chimed as Kiba charged at him again. But let me give you some helpful advice. He smirked to himself as Kiba's frustration showed more and more on his face as each attempted blow missed its mark until it became an almost feral look. If you let it take over you, he said with a smirk, then as Kiba swung at him, he disappeared. Up on the stands gasps from the viewers, especially Guy and Lee were heard. Akamaru barked a warning of Naruto's position. Kiba immediately threw a back fist but hit nothing but air looking down just in time to meet Naruto's foot that sent him flying and landing in a heap. You lose sight of everything. With the other ninja, wait, wasn't that, Sakura breathed out. The dancing leaf shadow, Kakashi finished. To think, that Naruto could copy that move as well, Lee said. Well I kind of expected it. Hanada's statement got everyone's attention. Well Naruto has always been watching despite his hyperactivity. What do you mean? Ino asked. Well, I mentioned this to him before we graduated from the academy. You know how sometimes he would just suddenly use a Juken Kata all of a sudden. The nods indicated her to continue, well when he noticed himself he asked me how he did it. My theory was that he sort of learns by watching, and eventually, over time he can do it to a degree. So he learns by watching, Kakashi said interested. On the outside he was impressed, 
but on the inside he couldn't help but wonder how Naruto was so good. Don't get him wrong he was happy that his student was showing improvement and all, but one thing was bugging him, how? Arena, as Naruto walked up to a downed Kiba, so how do you like me now dog breath? Unfortunately he didn't see the retaliatory kick that nearly sent him sprawling. You are so smug you know that. Thinking that just because you get a few good hits in that you're just the best there is. Naruto had just wiped his lip from a bit of blood when he heard the last sentence. Like we just can't deal without our wannabe Hokage around to help us. Well here's some news. We were fine without you. Okay. That. Wannabe. Comment wasn't going to stand. Oh really. Well then what about the forest? What about it? You risked the lives of your team. You could have clearly smelled the scent of that bear but you were so caught up in your own personal vendetta with me you didn't notice. Hell, even Akamaru noticed and you just ignored him. I mean, what the hell were you thinking? Don't push it Uzumaki. Don't expect me to just explain myself because you say so. Stands. Anybody besides me think this is getting a little personal, Ino said. Yeah I'm with you on that one. I've never seen Kiba that mad before, Sakura added troublesome what is it shikamaru choji asked has kiba always been like that or is it just towards naruto the other genin had thought about it but until after the mission in wave did sakura noticed a bit of hostility towards naruto coming from the inazuka now that you mention it after the wave mission kiba did seem a little more hostile to naruto sakura then turned to hanada hanada did kiba seem different to you after the mission in wave she saw Hanada visibly tense as she stood to full height. She then felt a hand on her shoulder, Shino. I will explain Hanada-san. Hanada was grateful for Shino being the more understanding of her two teammates. She went back to watching her teammate and crush circle one another. Oh that asshole. Her two fellow female genin's shouts snapped her out of her stupor. To think, letting his personal emotions get in the way. He nearly got all of us killed. He better hope I don't get my hands on him. Naruto kick his ass. Don't worry. After the match I will deal with him. They heard Kurenai's voice behind them. The tone alone gave them chills. If they had turned around they would have seen a very dark aura surrounding her, but luckily they knew better. Arena, all I'm trying to do is be a better ninja. Why do you hate me for that? And who says you are? You're impatient, stupid, and more importantly I'm better than you. Suddenly Naruto just laughed, oh you know what dog breath, and he then came to a stop, Kiba doing the same. I'll have to disagree with you on that one. He then slid into his fighting stance. You just don't know when to quit do you? Naruto smirked, why would I quit when I haven't even started yet? And with that the battle resumed. Both genin charged at each other and threw a right hook. Everyone in the stands flinched in mock pain as both punches connected with their intended targets. Naruto then spun on the ball of his foot swinging a roundhouse kick. Kiba blocked and retaliated with a swipe of his hand. Naruto blocked, spinning the opposite direction and went for a leg sweep which was dodged. Naruto spun to his feet and charged Kiba. They exchanged blows for a bit before splitting apart. Kiba then lunged at Naruto, who rolled to his back and kicked out his feet, knocking the Inazuka far to the other side of the arena. Gur let's go Akamaru, Kiba called. Akamaru barked as Kiba pulled something out of his back pocket. Tossing it to his dog and ingesting one himself he hunched over as Akamaru landed on his back, the pup's fur turning from white to red and standing on end. Let's do this. All of a sudden in a plume of smoke there were two Kibas. Man beast clone. And my odds just got shot down. Naruto thought. Kiba had a feral grin intensified as he and Akamaru ran at him, swinging a bevy of punches and kicks his way. He managed to block or dodge most of them but a few, which earned him a couple of slash marks on his jacket. After throwing one of the kibas into the other, they charged again and this time they spun, effectively turning into human drills. Fang over fang, the pair yelled. Oh shish, Naruto didn't even get to finish his curse when he had to start dodging the deadly drills. He dodged left and right trying to keep away from them. You can't run forever Naruto. I can try. Naruto shot back as he jumped every which where he could to get away from Kiba's jutsu. He was even running on the ceiling to avoid getting hit. But he has a point. At this rate he'll just tire me out. 
Naruto then steeled himself as he jumped over another attack. He ran to the opposite short wall and jumped off of it, towards Kiba's jutsu. The room collectively gasped as time seemed to slow and the two opponents neared. Suddenly Naruto veered to the right hard, made some hand signs and yelled, wind style, air bullet. Naruto fired a volleyball-sized bullet of air that sent the human drill careening out of control and into a wall. Naruto smirked as he heard curse words coming from the wall that the drill was sent to. Yep, he had hit Kiba. What the hell? When did you learn that jutsu? It's called training Kiba. Maybe if your head wasn't so far up your ass you would know. Kiba growled again. Oh this dead last was asking for it. Fine then, I'll just use that jutsu. He then signaled Akamaru and the two continued the fight. Stands. Well what do you know? A wind style user in Konoha. The black clothed puppet user Konkuro said. Oh please, that basic stuff. I could blow it away easily. His sister the blonde wind style user Tamari answered adjusting the giant fan on her back. Besides these two weaklings are nothing but all bark no bite, especially those two down there. Their brother Gara and Sensei Baki stayed silent, watching. But though he was silent, Gara was watching the blonde boy. At first he didn't really care about the loudmouth, but something seemed different about him since that day, and Gara could feel it. Meanwhile on the other side of the arena everyone, save for the Hokage, was gaping. I didn't know Naruto knew another jutsu. Neither did I. Kakashi, did you teach him that? I, didn't. All Kakashi could do was watch as Naruto ducked, dodged, and fired off rounds of his jutsu. It just didn't make sense. Of course it seemed that Naruto was getting more into his team and all and he seemed a bit calmer. But he would have never have guessed Naruto was learning jutsus on his own. He would have to ask about it after the exams were over. Back at the battle, what's wrong Kiba? Naruto called as Kiba stopped in front of him. Running out of steam, Kiba said nothing as he sent a hidden signal to Akamaru, who nodded in understanding. The moment they crouched, Naruto prepared himself for another blitz. And just as before Naruto had to dodge Kiba's jutsu, but something was different. As Naruto jumped over one of the Kibas, he looked behind just in time to see both of the drills combining. What the? Naruto didn't get enough time as the drill bore down on his now just landed form. Wind style. Air bullets. Naruto fired off six blasts of wind but as they came into contact with his opponent, they were torn apart. Naruto let out a curse as he tried to jump over the jutsu. He made it, but not without incident. Naruto had a gash on his leg from the jutsu. Even without wind chakra that jutsu is dangerous. Naruto look out. Sakura's voice brought him back. Just in time for one of the tunneling fangs to knock him into the air. But Kiba wasn't done yet. He started juggling Naruto back and forth, ripping into the blonde's flesh, blood flying everywhere. He was going to show Naruto who the top dog was. And with a final attack sending Naruto into the air once more, both Kibas recombined, this ends now. Super Fang over Fang. Once the Jutsu made contact with Naruto, all that could be heard was the boy's screams as he was pinned between the ceiling and Kiba's new Jutsu. Kiba's taking this too far. He's gonna kill him. Kiba enough, you've proven your point. All Hanada could do was watch as Naruto was literally ripped into. Tears were coming from her eyes as she was hoping praying, for Naruto's pain to end. After a few more moments Kiba and a now puppy Akamaru landed back on the ground, the former looking up at his handiwork. And he smirked, hey, you should have quit while you were ahead, dead last. Kiba was a bit tired yes, but the training on his own that he had put into that jutsu paid off and did the job as he intended. Everyone looked up to see the blonde Jinchuriki embedded into the ceiling, and was coming loose. Naruto-kun, thought Hinata as she watched her crush, her best friend fall seemingly lifeless, and slam into the cold stone floor. Kiba you jerk, you could have killed him. That's right you went too far dog breath. That was an extremely unyouthful thing you have done. Ah shut up. Kiba yelled back up to the stands. He didn't care, as long as Naruto learned his lesson. Not to mess with his Hanada-chan. As Hayate went to check on Naruto, he suddenly stopped. Naruto had started to move. The gasps that came forth were of shock and fear. As Naruto slowly, painfully made his way to his feet, his wounds were visible. 
His jacket was ripped to shreds and there were several slash marks in the shirt below, and his right pant leg had been ripped below the shin, while both also sported several slash marks. But the most prominent and horrifying of his features was the blood. Every wound that he sported, he was bleeding from, not including his mouth. In other words, Kiba messed him up, badly. I'm, not, going down, Naruto started as he tried to get himself steady. Not until, I become Hokage. HMPH, still talking about that pipe dream of yours. Well let me at least do you a favor. Kiba snarkily said as Naruto lifted his head to look at him. I'll just become Hokage for you. Kiba's laughter penetrated the room as Naruto's headband slipped off his head. I got to feel bad for the kid. Konkuro said watching the fight. I have to admit, he is a lot better than I gave him credit for. Yeah, but oh well. Tamari added, and it'll be one less hindrance with the plan. But suddenly, it's not over, Gara spoke. His siblings looked over to him, seeing their brother's eyes locked on his fellow Jinchuriki. Baki looked over at Gara. Gara hasn't acted like this before. What's got his attention on that boy down there? Down in the arena Kiba's laughter died down. Slowly, silently, Naruto leaned down and picked up his headband all the while keeping his head down blocking out his hair. So, that's how it is, right? The tone in which Naruto asked the question was chilling. It spoke of one thing, finality. Kiba snorted, yeah, it is. And this fight is over. You can barely move, all I have to do is hit you one more time. Naruto raised his head, sapphire orbs almost blazing, trust me Kiba, this is far from over. Naruto pocketed the headband, grabbed a shoulder of his orange jacket and ripped it off, leaving his mostly intact shirt. He put his hands in a ram seal and made three more signs, snake, hare then tiger, then threw his right arm up in the air. All of a sudden, four golden chains shot into the air from his sleeve, eliciting a lot of reactions from the watching audience. The chains started shrinking and wrapping around his arm, turning into an ornate tattoo. Once the process finished, Naruto's arm was literally covered in chakra, making his arm look like it was covered in blue fire. In the stands, that's, a lot of chakra, Uruka said. I'll say, who the hell taught the kid how to do that? Enko replied. The Hokage kept silent but smirked, looks like Kiba has pushed Naruto into using that jutsu. I hope he can pull it off without hurting the boy. Kiba for his part tried to play the tough guy, s so what's that supposed to be your saving grace? Though the events that followed, Kiba would remember for a long time. One moment Naruto was in front of him, the next he was right in front of him. It all happened in slow motion as Naruto pulled his tattoo-clad arm back, curling his fingers into a fist and planted it into Kiba's gut, sending the Inazuka flying. Kiba cringed in pain after he slid to a stop, cursing under his breath as he climbed back to his feet. I see you have a new jutsu Kiba, but let me tell you, you're not the only one. The blonde's eyes trailed to the Hokage who nodded slightly enough to be noticed. Kiba growled, oh yeah, yeah, so what do you say we put an end to all of this? Your new jutsu, Naruto then jumped to the top of the hand seal statue and put his hands in the snake seal, and made eleven hand seals afterward, ending in the tiger seal, versus mine. My chakra control is shot, but I know I can hold it for long enough to blow dog breath away. Suddenly it seemed like a storm had suddenly started as what looked like a tornado engulfed the statue and Naruto with it. As everyone was hanging on, someone noticed what was happening to the statue. Guys look! They turned to see the statue getting gashes in it as if a blade was cutting it. And it wasn't the only one. Look! What's happening to Naruto? On top of the statue Naruto was stock still as he concentrated. But also he was gaining cuts as well. It's wind chakra. Everyone looked to Asuma as he stood wide-eyed. And a lot of it. Who in the world taught you this Naruto? Kakashi couldn't keep himself from being wonderstruck as he watched his student. Just a little more, now, suddenly as fast as it came the windstorm dispersed. Naruto threw his tattooed hand up and snapped his fingers into a fist. Simultaneously, wind chakra gathered around his arm, making a familiar set of eyes, a nose, a mouth and very familiar set of jaws and teeth that snapped closed around Naruto's fist. The visage that was created was shocking. What the, how, that's the, 
Everyone who wasn't too shocked to speak had their own little two-word shock. The reason, surrounding Naruto's entire arm was the head, the visage of the nine-tailed fox itself. Just think of it as the head of the Kurama when Naruto went biju mode. Ready Kiba, Naruto shouted. Said Inazuka shook out of his shock as he and Akamaru charged, the puppy going back into its man-beast clone. He wasn't going to let the dead last get the best of him just by using some lame scare tactic. Besides it's just a copy of Hanada's jutsu. Oh how wrong he was. This ends now, super fang over fang. Naruto stuck himself to the statue, and reared his fist back, wind style. And right on time the visage's eyes flashed light green. Right on time. Naruto threw his hand forward with a mighty yell, primal r o o o o o a a a a r r. Naruto opened his fist, and true to the jutsu's name, the fox head gave a grand roar. But what came out of its mouth was not only sound, but a huge torrent of greenish wind that Kiba's jutsu was stopped in its tracks. As the two jutsus battled for supremacy, everyone else was holding on to something once more as the wind's overall force, while it was concentrated, was creating gusts that tore through the room. This, is, crazy, Shikamaru yelled over the roaring winds and hanging on to the railing. How long has Naruto been this strong? Naruto-kun, Hanada had thought her lion's fist was strong. This seemed to just take the bar she made and shatter it. Back in the arena Naruto decided to end the stalemate and with one final yell he unleashed every ounce of chakra he could spare into his jutsu. The winds turned to nothing but chakra as nothing, not even Kiba and Akamaru's cries could be heard. After Naruto released the jutsu and as it dissipated, the Inazuka and his ninja dog fell to the ground, their own bodies sporting cuts and gashes. But what everyone had their eyes mostly on was the giant hole in the wall. It was large enough to fit all four of the genin teams of the Konoha 12, senseis included. Then the eyes turned to the only one left standing, Naruto Uzumaki. They all watched as what seemed like smoke was coming from all his wounds. His arm that was still outstretched lowered back down to his side. He took a deep breath to get his breathing under control and said two words. You lose. The end. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.